Well, good evening. It's I'm seven o'clock. Uh, this is a joint meeting of the Legislative Matters and the Community Resources Committee uh, to discuss one agenda item. I'm uh, the chair of Legislative Matters. Council Shara is Community Resources. Um, just to let you all know, we're there. This meeting will be video and audio recorded. That's by way of informed consent. And <clears throat> I'm going to ask Laura to call the roll of the Legislative Matters Committee. Sure. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. And Councilor Klein. Here. Um, and I'm going to ask Laura to call the roll of Community Resources, please. Councilor Shara. Here. Councilor Bidwell. Present. Councilor Klein. Here. Again. <laughs> really here. Here. All right. So we, we have quorum. Quora. We have two quorums. Um, yeah, no, Councilor Sharon and I have figured out how we're going to conduct this. And actually, I want to defer to Councilor Shara since um, she's been walking point on this for the most part. And um, take it away. Um, now that you've been convened, I'll just say again that we're being audio and video recorded. Um, and I, I will call for public comment, but I want to note that if you're here to speak on the, uh, the proposal to expand tenant membership, that um, we will be opening the public forum in just a moment. So if you're here to speak on that, if you wait a moment, you'll have a chance uh, in the public forum. But if you're here to, to talk to either committee on any other matter, now would be the time to come up for public comment. <coughs> Seeing none, we will jump right into the, the forum. Um, this is the second, oh sorry, was there a sign up? I'm not sure if that's for general public comment or... Let's ask. Um, Ken Pratt, are you, hold on one second, are you here to talk about the Housing Authority proposal? Correct, yes, okay. uh, 18142. Great. Um, if you hold on one minute, well, sure. this is just public comment for of a more general nature, so um, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing. It. Uh, Mr. Martin, are you? I'm here? here for the same thing. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so this is the second public forum. We had one on uh, October 24th, and as we did last time, I'm going to um, let the council president Ryan O'Donnell give a brief presentation. On the order, which is his, uh, that he wrote, and um, additionally, it's been amended. So if he could explain the amendment, that would be that would be great. And then after that, we will open it up to um, comment from everyone here. Thank you. Um, thank you very much to, to both chairs and all, all members. Of we pretty much have the entire council here, don't we? Yeah. Um, I appreciate the process that we've gone through, and thank you to everyone for showing up tonight to talk about this. Um, just very briefly. Briefly, since I've said a lot of this before, um, this order asks the legislature to pass legislation through the home rule process to modify the structure of Northampton Housing Authority Governing Board. Uh, as originally introduced, the proposal had two policy objectives. Uh, the first was to increase tenant representation on the board, and secondly, to allow tenants to choose those representatives through an election. Both of these goals were part of my overall belief in the need to increase accountability and democracy in the housing authority. The Northampton Housing Authority's own mission statement says it best when it declares its aspiration to, quote, hold ourselves and each other accountable, end quote. As a practical matter, however, no governing body can expect to be given its due automatically. It must actively exercise its power of oversight, engage the people to whom it delegates authority. It has to demand to be consulted whenever it believes it should have a role in policy making. When there are problems, it has to take responsibility for those problems. And if it doesn't do these things, the governing board is ultimately going to lose influence and effectiveness. So I believe the formal inclusion of more tenants and housing advocates as commissioners would support uh, the governing board in its effort to be more involved, vigilant, and focused on the central needs of the residents of public housing, 
and I think this is due to their natural um, direct experience as tenants and with ties to this community. Stronger connections to tenants are just going to make the board um, work better. The second thing, while we try and improve connections from the tenants, our housing authority also needs stronger connections to the surrounding city and the democratic institutions of the city, like we see here tonight. The Housing Authority has a population that is actually larger than some small towns in Massachusetts. In some ways, it's really its, its own city. This is, you know, rhetorically speaking. It's really a city within a city. But today, that city is isolated. It is cut off legally and socially in many ways from government and civic life of the wider community. Contrast, look at Northampton. Look at we're, what we're about to embark on next year. We're about to start a year-long review of our charter. We're about to have a big discussion about how we want to govern ourselves. I have no doubt we're going to have many ideas and reforms that come out of that process. We never do that for the Housing Authority, but we should. And the tenants of the Housing Authority, I think, deserve some thought on our part about reforms that could help them. So having said that, I, I, I will as asked address the proposed amendment that I would ask, I guess, legislative matters to adopt tonight. Um, what do you see fit? Originally, the proposed legislation would have added six tenant commissioners to an existing five-person board in an election. Uh, the city council set up a public process for open review of the legislation that included two committee meetings and two public forums, second of which is now. Uh, the process entailed conversations with the mayor, solicitor, tenants themselves, legal experts, housing advocates, representatives of the Northampton Housing Authority, Northampton's incoming state legislative representatives, and the Department of Housing and Community Development, which is the state um, department that oversees public housing, among other things. After listening to all the ideas and concerns I heard, I approached Mayor Narkowitz and together we collaborated to arrive at a mutually agreed upon revision that I believe, crucially, can secure the necessary political support to succeed in Northampton and stand a better chance in the legislature. Um, this while pursuing the reform objectives that I described. I, believe, I stand by this revision that I would ask be adopted, and I think it will make a big difference. Here is what it is. If enacted by the legislature, the Northampton Housing Authority Board would expand from five to seven members. This would include a minimum of two tenant commissioners, as opposed to the one commissioner who is required to be a tenant today. We would also add one housing advocate from the housing partnership, which is the, the city board that is charged with pursuing affordable and fair housing in Northampton. These would be appointed by the mayor not elected, and they would be subject to city council approval as all appointments are. The other thing to tell you is that in addition to people who reside in the units that are directly owned and operated by the housing authority, uh, Northampton residents who receive a, re a rental subsidy through a voucher program would also qualify as to be one of the tenant commissioners, so it expands the definition. So the result would be a board of a size on par with other jurisdictions in the country, with a greater capacity for subcommittee work and resident services, uh, the tenant commissioners would be well positioned to forge a stronger connection to the residents of public housing, and hopefully they would facilitate uh, the creation of a resident advisory board. They would facilitate the creation of flourishing tenant associations across Northampton. The housing advocate, in turn, would be well positioned to forge an equally strong relationship with the city of Northampton and our overall efforts to fight for affordable housing. Um, so I believe in this proposal, and ever since I was a counselor from Ward 3 and, and worked uh, at Salvo House, I've been puzzling about what can we do to address some of the concerns that we would want addressed if we lived in public housing. Uh, I think this is a meaningful reform, and I look forward to the comments tonight from the public and my fellow counselors. Um, <clears throat> so before we open it up to public comment, um, we received 
three letters that have been shared that are public comment that were shared with the council. Um, so I'd like to read them now, and then Councilor Dwight has um, some other correspondence that he's going to read, just so that we all have, I want us all to have the same amount of information. Um, so the first letter that I want to read into the record is from, um, <coughs> excuse me, Ellis Malensky, and she wrote, uh, she addressed it to me, but it's been shared with, um, with all the counselors. Dear Councilor Mashera, you asked for suggestions where you might hold other meetings regarding adding tenants to the Northampton Housing Board of Directors. May I suggest a community room at the McDonald House where tenants could easily access the meeting space and use would be free, or the Northampton Senior Center. I'm wondering if notice of these meetings were given all tenants, as well as other notifications are often taped to their doors. It's important also for them to know how and who to submit their thoughts also in writing by both email and snail mail. <coughs> I would like, I would also like it to be entered into the record that I read in the Gazette that Ms. Clifford let the social worker who was employed under Mr. Height go when she took over. She was then forced to rehire John McKemmy and then he left stating he could not work for her for a keeper. It's my strong feeling that someone who can act can virtually be employed in the capacity of a social worker and that position was a paid position under Mr. Height's budget if I'm correct. A social worker can help tenant find, tenants find resources and support and hopefully help settle issues of concern with management. Uh, who would make the appointment to a resident advisory council? Ms. Ms. Clifford. My son was the secretary of the McDonald Tenant Association before he became seriously ill. It's often difficult to keep a tenant association going. I honestly believe that the tenants have reasonable expectations and want to be treated with dignity and respect to live in peace and harmony. They also fear, that, fear they may be targeted or lose their housing if they become too vocal so many, so so many remain quiet. Please feel free to email, share this email with your committee and enter it into the records. My hope that the tenants will have a much stronger influence on the North Hampton Housing Board of Directors as it is their health and well-being that is directly impacted the tenants. It is not a mere issue of budget and regulations. Thank you for all your efforts. As I previously stated, my son is extremely grateful along with all of the tenants for their place to call home. Sincerely, Alex Swansky. <coughs> of uh, 14 Illinois Court in Florence. Um, the next letter is from Kimberly Rogers, and she says, hello, I am a tenant residing at Fort Sander in Florence. I have been in the public housing system for almost two years after a two-year wait, in which, NH in which NH NHA continually misplaced paperwork, lied about or mishandled my case. It took doctors, psychologists, and therapists involved to finally move my case forward and give me an apartment. I was given an apartment at Cahill first. I can tell you that the violations there were enormous. Tenants, the Northampton Police Department, Western Mass Legal Services that I involved, as well as the Boston Home Office, were never answered or corrected by NHA. Everything from extreme daily everything from extreme daily violence to poor property management. Homeless people were allowed to sleep in common areas, and people not listed on leases lived with residents for years. Drugs and abuse against women were a common daily problem. NHA has decades of written complaints that never were answered. Since I had never lived in public housing before, nor a complex, nor even an apartment, I had my own home and was married for 22 years before my motorcycle accident, which caused my disability. I was appalled at the conditions and twice ended up being hospitalized for exhaustion and PTSD because I was afraid to sleep at night and felt myself under a constant state of threat. <clears throat> so I am wondering what this legislation is about. I have been very vocal with NHA about tenancy laws in the state and their violations. Since I'm familiar with tenancy and landlord laws in Massachusetts and studied our own lease carefully, I was able to receive action and advocate for myself so that I was immediately moved to Fort Sander, a place my doctor had asked for from the beginning and they tried to give to another person ahead of me. I'm much happier here. For some reason, this property is treated differently by the tenants of NHA and the events of the public. I believe I may be a good advocate for the tenants of NHA <coughs> if, that, if, that, if that what the position calls for it that is what the position calls for in the legislation. Please send more information regarding the tenant responsibilities if elected. It's difficult for me to get to meetings, but I feel that those that cannot get to meetings still deserve representation, voices, and a chance to run for election. Thank you, Kimberly Ann Rogers. And the, the last letter I'm just gonna note and um, not read because of uh, privacy issues that, was, that were requested. Um, so those three are part of our record. And do you want to share those? Um, uh, the solicitor is here, and this is a memo, and I believe it's been shared with you. This is uh, dated October 16th. This is the solicitor's opinion. I'm going to read it aloud for the record. Or something. 
Um, the city, and this is to the two chairs, uh, myself and, and Councilor Sheriff. The City Council Committees on Legislative Matters and Community Resources will be holding public fora with regard to proposal and to a proposal filed by uh, Council President O'Donnell to seek state legislative approval of, of a special act increasing the membership of the Northampton Housing Authority, uh, otherwise known as NHA. You've requested a memorandum on the uh, legislative process for seeking that special act. And with the caveat that the city may not have the standing to seek special legislation with regard to NHA, the following process for obtaining, the following is the process for obtaining special legislation. Prior to 1966 and the adoption of the amendment article 89 to the Massachusetts Constitution, cities and towns could enact only that legislation that the state legislature specifically authorized them to enact. Article 89, also known as the Home Rule Amendment, expanded local power by authorizing local legislation to, quote, exercise any power or function which the general court has the power to confer upon it, which is not inconsistent with the Constitution or laws enacted by the general court in conformity with powers reserved to the general court by Section 8, and which is not denied either expressly or by clear implication to the city or town by its charter, close quote. And that's uh, Mass uh, Massachusetts Constitution um, and Article 89, subsection 6. <coughs> the establishment of home rule authority of cities and towns was accompanied by a limitation on the ability of the state legislature to enact statutes relating to a single city or town. Section 8 of the Home Rule Amendment provides that, quote, the general court shall have the power to act in relation to cities and towns, but only by general laws, which apply alike to all cities, or to all towns, or to all cities and towns, or to a class of not fewer than two. Section, and that's close quote. Section 8 allows for special acts that relate to a single city or town, quote, one on petition filed or approved by the voters of a city or town, or the mayor and the city council, or legislative body of a city or the town uh, meeting of a town with respect to a law relating to that city or town and, and then two by a two-thirds vote of the, each branch of the general court following a recommendation by the governor close quote after reviewing the proposed language being considered by the city uh, council DHCD offers the following comments one the two-year term I is I'm looking, oh my God, yes. All right, Jesus, yes. All right, thus, what's on the back for saved uh, paper? Thank you, Lord. Um, thus, in order to initiate special legislation, the city council must pass an order authorizing the mayor to seek a special act, which order must be signed by the mayor. And the request for a special act should specify the degree to which the, uh, the legislation may be altered in the legislative process, typically. The order allows the legislature to make it clerical or editorial changes and, with the mayor's approval, modification so long as they are within the general objectives of the proposed act. The order could require enactment exactly as drafted, but such a provision would significantly reduce the likelihood that the legislature will pass the special act. The proposed act is then filed by our state representative and proceeds through the usual, uh, the usual legislative process. Finally, as I stated above, there is a question as to whether the city would have standing to propose a special act with regard to the NHA. Section 8.1, quoted above, requires that a proposed special act be, quote, a law relating to that city or town, close quote. While the NHA is a statutory body under Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 121B, under the control of the authority uh, members, its residents are all domiciled in the city. The mayor appoints four of the five members of the authority, and the authority members and the NHA employees are considered city employees for conflict of interest purposes. And while I believe that the proposed legislation would be a law relating, in quotes, to Northampton, I must caution that this is an open question. And please let me know if you need anything further from me in this regard. And this is from uh, Amy Stitely, is that how her name is pronounced? Uh, this is to <coughs> uh, Councilor O'Donnell. She is of the DHCD. 
this is her comments on the proposed Northampton City Council legislation. After reviewing the proposed language being considered by the City Council, DHCD offers the following comments. One, the two-year term is very short, period. This would be counterproductive to the board if it had to accommodate such a rotating group. A, other board members are appointed for five-year term and the expiration years are staggered so that the board has somewhat uh, consistent membership. B, also it takes a while to learn the duties of being a board member because boards have a rather technical set of duties, DHCD has mandated online trainings for all board members. There's also a voluntary DHCD funded one day in-person session offered for tenant board members and Mass NAHRO offers board member trainings too. Uh, number two, tenant elections can be time consuming, costly, and are difficult to administer slash monitor for fairness. <coughs> For these reasons, the Housing Authority and tenant advocacy groups are now jointly requesting that the state legislature amend Section 5A of Mass General Law 121B to require an appointment process for town tenant board members instead of an election. Now, parenthetically, legislative amendment may be forthcoming in the next uh, six months. Close parentheses. A. State election laws are protective of people's rights, so working outside of state election laws slash infrastructure could leave the process open to a risk of disenfranchisement, accusations of fraud, etc. Please consider who or what agency would have uh, dispute resolution powers if this moves forward. B, the cost to administer elections is not trivial. DHCD would not provide any additional funding to the Housing Authority to conduct such elections. I'm not sure if HUD would. One reason uh, mail seems like a better election system is that some residents have difficulty getting to an in-person election, parenthetically saying, dealing with transportation, translation, babysitting, etc. close parentheses. However, the Boston Housing Authority seems to have found a way to successfully administer in-person citywide elections for the resident advisory board. Talking to them would be a good idea if this moves forward. Three. Assuming that the Section 5A of Mass General Law 121B is amended in the coming months, DHCD will not be promulgating uh, regulations on administration of tenant elections. Housing authorities also do not have the legal authority to promulgate their own regulations, so I would consider saying elections shall be in accordance with the authorities' policies, not regulations. <laughs> That's the end of that. <coughs> no sign off or anything else. Okay. Um, although I think it would be, thank you for your patience as we go through all of this. Um, I think it would be appropriate to read the amended order that Councillor O'Donnell has um, has just explained since it's changed substantially since the last forum. So I'm just going to quickly do that and then we will open it up. Um, so it says amendment in the year 2018 upon the recommendation of Councillor Brian R. O'Donnell, 18.142 in order relative to the Northampton Housing Authority. Order that the mayor is hereby authorized and requested to petition the general court to the end that the following legislation be adopted precisely as follows. The general court may make clerical or editorial changes of form only to the bill, unless the mayor approves amendments to the bill before enactment by the general court. The mayor is hereby authorized to approve amendments which shall be within the scope of the general public objectives of this petition. <clears throat> an act relative to the Northampton Housing Authority, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives in the General Court assembled as follows. Section 1, notwithstanding any other general or special laws, law to the contrary, members of the Northampton Housing Authority shall include two members in addition to the five members provided by Chapter 121B, Section 5. One member appointed pursuant to this act shall be a tenant in a building owned and operated by or on behalf of the Housing Authority or a resident of Northampton who is assisted by the Housing Authority through a rental subsidy program. The other member appointed pursuant to this act shall be a member of the Northampton Housing Partnership or such successor municipal body charged with promoting fair and affordable housing in the city. The members appointed pursuant to this act shall be appointed by the mayor with the city council approval for initial terms of one year and three years respectively. Thereafter, as the terms of the members expire, their successor shall be appointed in the same manner for a term of three years. A majority of total members of the authority as amended hereby shall constitute a quorum. Section two, this act shall take effect upon its passage. Okay, so thank you. So that is the order to which we're referring. <coughs> um, 
Councilor O'Donnell, will you be available for <coughs> questions? And I'll note that again, the city solicitor is here, is also available. So, um, who would like to come and tell us your thoughts on this order? We can go to sign up. <coughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, sign up. So, Mr. Pratt, would you like to go first, please? Thank you. And if you can please state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Kenneth Richard Pratt. I have been a Salvo resident for over a year, watching the place go down and down and <coughs> down into the sewer. We have a lot of problems at Salvo House of all kinds. I have been assaulted with a deadly weapon the case has been taken care of by the district court. NHA did not take care of it. As to the matter before us, I believe the intention of uh, 18142 is correct. I agree that the communications between the residents and the authority needs to be formally approved, improved. Um, however, the means, I question that uh, to use an agrarian metaphor, we have a situation here where the fox will be guarding the hen house. If the authority is allowed to run whatever elections do take place. The residents of Salvo House are not used to speaking up. They have been beaten down. This I can document in a number of cases. I don't think the authority is intentionally doing this. They're just typical bureaucrats, not listening to the people. If we are one day late paying the rent, they will listen. If we have people crashing out, overdosing in the newly commemorated Bodgar room, Something needs to be done, something active, something to protect the residents. So I am in favor of this 18142 if it really does represent the people's wishes. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Martin. Good evening. My name is Roy C. Martin, 81 Pine Street, apartment 529. Now, I was in favor of this when it said that there would be six people, one from each one of the places. All right. And the reason I was in favor of this is because since Kara Clifford became the director, right, she has taken away Tennis Association at the Tennis Association. She has taken the money that's supposed to go to Tenants Association for their parties and stuff. She put the parties underneath a service coordinator, which is when it came. And uh, she has taken everything away from the people there, right? And any representation, I go up there for my three minute interview, right, every time she has a meeting. All right? And then she'll sit there and she'll live through a meeting, right? And people beat it up. People up here, you all eat it up, you know, right? And but but Marianne was at one meeting, right? And people shouted her down. I didn't like that. I, I said right there that should not be. That person came here to represent you, right? But we need representation, and that means that we need something like one person from each building to go to that and to go to that meeting over there and sit down with them and say, listen, this is what's going on. 
Yeah. Uh, we try, right? You know, I talk to Jerry Butker once in a while, right? You know, I told him, come over, look at you, look at the room. I said, you know, they're, they're making a mess of it, right? They had commemorated a room for Jerry's parents, right, who had done a lot for the cell house. And we didn't even see where the ribbon was cut. You know, she, she went up there and parents said that we never saw where the ribbon was cut or anything else. We didn't see anything up there, uh, anything different, you know. Uh, they put a picture of the of Jerry's parents and a little plaque up there, right? Which I thought was beautiful. Right? But people are really making a mess there. I mean, the rugs are, are filthy now, right? Yeah, and the rugs in the hallways are filthy, right? Uh, matter of fact, there's one door down the end down there. Somebody had broke off the piece on the top. And every time somebody opens it, it just blows open and stays wide open. Anybody can walk in at any time. Yeah. And I was over to the office today, and I said about that door. And I said, the other day, I said to a maintenance man, and he says, well, you'll have to call it in. Now, you call in at night or on a holiday, right? You get no coverage. Nobody comes. So if we had somebody from the house, that was elected by the people in the house. Now, I ran for president, they had to change my name around. All right? Uh, give me the wrong name so that nobody knew me, so of course they didn't vote for me. I, I had been president before. When I was president, we had a strong, it was almost like a union, right? And people would come and people were enjoying themselves, right? We'd have parties, we'd have everything else. And we also would have commitment with the office, all right? And when John Height was there, we had good commitment, all right? I don't care what anyone says about John Height. John Height was a good man, a good director, all right? And when you needed something, he was there. If there was an emergency, he was there, right? You know, they could call him up at home, and he would be there in 15 minutes no matter what time of day or night it was, right? If there was fire, if there was this, if there was that, right? That man would be there, right? So, but I mean, that that was him, right? And right now we have to deal with Kara. And Kara is, she's two-faced, right? If you really want to know, right? I wouldn't have voted to have her as a director, right? Uh, I mean, at first I was beginning to like the person, but not get on, right? She, she, the way she's doing things and everything that she's doing, right? I cannot, I cannot accept it. I can't condone it. I mean, you know, she's taken away from everybody there in the house, right? Well, we need representation. And where do we get representation? Now, the mayor is going to appoint somebody. The mayor just appointed somebody, right? The mayor had one person in there, right? And the mayor says, I'm not reappointing you. And that man was doing a great job, all right? But because he had spoke up <coughs> to Kara on a couple of things, right? The mayor didn't, uh, wasn't going to reappoint him, all right? So who's doing what? Is Kara and the mayor working together, right? How do we know we're going to get representation, all right? If the mayor appoints the people, how do we know that we're going to get representation, all right? Now, <coughs> We got no representation now, right? We've got battles the other night, right? Guy punched me right in the nose, right? Broke my glasses and everything else, right? Got the police down there, right? Made a report to the police and everything, right? Uh, went to the office and asked them if they knew it. Oh, this, no, no, right? No. I said, didn't you get a police report? No, 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 right? Oh, all right, so you don't get police reports. You don't get not, nothing like that. Right? Ambulance calls, right? OGs. I mean, you know, the place is getting like the old Wild West. You know, you don't care where you're going, you know, and you're in trouble. But, I mean, you know, that's a literal word. Yeah, right. That don't mean everybody carries a gun. Although there was a few people who was carrying guns at one time. But, most of them are gone now. Mr. Rodman, I'm just mindful that okay, many people right, yeah, right. But I mean, okay. Now, do you, now do you people understand that 
without representation and the way that was worded in the first place, right? But because he figured, Mr. O'Donnell figured that you people wasn't going to vote for it, right? City Council wouldn't vote for it the way it was worded. So he had to change it around. Now, right, there's no, no balls to that amendment at all, right? And I know that the governor, right, he would have thought the way we think. Now, that's all I got to say, right? Thank you so now, much. You gotta, make, you gotta make up your mind to something. Thank you. Um, so that's everyone who was signed up. Uh, but please, uh, if you raise your hand. Um, Anyway. Tom Burton, that was over at Salva House. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, as the, as the, as the uh, proposal was originally designed, it was a pretty a minimalist approach, but uh, electing people is core to the success of this because uh, it's giving people power within the, and within, the, within the community, a community that, that is unrepresented in every other way. The last time with the, the, uh, the air conditioning debacle of the, of the summer, we have no record. I had nobody to turn to. I mean, we had no one to turn to. Um, you know, our representation on Beacon Hill was was it would have either died or been removed by the Senate. Um, the mayor was indifferent. Said, "It's not our value. I mean, we just appoint him, and that's it." And that kind of boilerplate. I finally went to the district attorney's office because, you know, they were kind of running out of people to. Uh, to ask, saying that you know people's lives are being threatened by insane policies. And can you possibly do something about it? Um, fortunately, the, what what fixed it was really uh, Barry Ann showed up this meeting. There was a lot of uh, value about it in the newspapers, and uh, you know we were able to get this rescinded. This is one of many issues. This perhaps the most critical if you take away people's air conditioning during heat wave. So. Uh, I would, uh, I would urge, I think that, that a democratic process where people, you have people who are, uh, represent you in your community, uh, running the housing authority would be a better way to do it than being appointed by a mayor who's indifferent to that portion of the population, obviously. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, you guys, I think, said, well, you know, we said you were in the same boat, that, you know, we approve of the folks, but then after that, we have nothing to say. There's nothing more we can do about it. Um, so we have no accountability to anybody. We can get no accountability from anyone there. And then amending it, Ryan, to, to have the uh, to have them appointed by the mayor doesn't really solve the problem because the mayor is part of the problem. You know, David Markowitz has less than no interest in the you know in the, in the people in this part of the population. Yeah, I've lived there five years. I've never seen that. But uh, even if I had seen them there, the uh, the pop, you know there's 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 no there's no interaction between what what the city can do and what the what happens to the people on a daily basis. Roy's extremely eloquent about that. Uh, probably far more involved in it than I am, since nobody's trying to punch me lately. <laughs> but uh, but it's 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 really it's a very critical situation. It's more you know you, we kind of. You make jokes about it after a while because it's, you know, what can you do day after day? But it really, we really need to have elect people. We need the people in these house. This housing authority has to make their own decisions about who represents them. This, to me, this is critical. This is like the most critical part of that. The having Narkowitz do it is will be at, just continue the same disaster we're having now because that's what he's been doing. You know, he appointed those other. But four of the five people, or five of the six people, however many, say one that the governor picked. Um, you know, we need we need to be people need to do it themselves. And it may be, as the solicitor said, there may be some laws, some things that have to be worked through. But I mean, democracies you have to work through things. They they're less efficient and more uh, thought and time consuming than dictatorships. But uh, we choose not to live in a dictatorship. Uh, except if you live in public housing, in which case then you're, you know, subject to the whims of people that have no interest in you because you know, maybe you don't vote, or maybe people that don't vote, or they, you know, they, they're not part of the petite bourgeois that, that have interest in property in the city and 
pay, you know, pay city taxes. But whatever it is, the most important part of this legislation, as it was originally promulgated, was that people would be elected. And in reality, they should all be elected. People should democratize where they live, you should democratize where you work. This is a, a, a better way to organize things. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Hi, uh, my name is Julio Alves. I live at 35 Fort Hill, Paris. And I'm also a member of the Housing Partnership, though I'm here tonight speaking on my own behalf. And I'm here to speak in support of the expansion of tenant membership in the Northampton Housing Authority. Uh, I, I'm going to echo some of the things that have already been so eloquently said. Uh, I think that the, the, the current proposal in its, um, in its amended version is, is, is much too modest, but if that's what we have to work with, then I urge you to support uh, that. I think we all agree that fair elections and representation is a fundamental right, and so I was very surprised to learn uh, that uh, tenants had so little representation in, in the Housing Authority. This actually, maybe I shouldn't have been, uh, but I was. And I, I think that the representation is essential uh, because no one knows the needs and issues of uh, the different uh, buildings like the tenants do, as has become clear here. I, I think that if we had uh, people speaking from, from the different uh, units, they would have different emphases. And so uh, I think that it's become clear that without tenant representation, uh, we won't be able to hear the diversity of voices that we need to hear. Um, I hear a lot of frustration, and I've been hearing a lot of frustration uh, among the tenants uh, for a long time. And I think uh, uh, this proposal, uh, I had hoped for a stronger proposal, will uh, address that. And I think this is just, it's not just an issue of fairness. It's also an issue of expediency, that if things are really going to improve, that we have to hear and empower from the people uh, who are most affected. So, thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, my name's Jeff Jones, uh, 76 Woods Road, um, Ward 6. I'm um, chairman of the board of Northampton Housing Authority. I'm not here tonight to speak for the board. I'm here to only speak for myself because of open meeting laws. I have no idea whether any other um, board members have voiced their opinion or came to the prior meeting. Um, basically, um, I was never consulted for the first proposal, nor to my knowledge was anybody on the board consulted uh, hypothetically, what, what do you think? Um, I read about the second proposal in this morning's Gazette. Um, I found out about the first proposal when a newspaper reporter called me on the phone. Um, I'm very sensitive to the tenants' um, situations. I've been, I don't even know how long I've been a member of the board. I think at least 10 years, maybe longer, maybe shorter, somewhere like that. I'm the representative of organized labor that's mandated to be on the board. Um, right now, of the five people, we have two uh, tenants. We have a new tenant appointee, and the governor's appointee is also a tenant. Um, in my opinion, um, two out of five members is a sufficient representation to get across the tenant issues before the board, before the executive director. As chairman, one of my goals was always to have uh, tenant associations at all the major groups that the authority uh, takes care of. Recently, um, our new tenant representative is from Florence Heights. Recently, uh, Hampshire Heights um, um, finally 
um, formed their tenant association and were recognized by the housing authority. So I think we are making progress. The other three major units at uh, Tobin, Salvo, and McDonald have at various times had tenant associations and they dissolved. Um, some because of internal problems, some because people have moved on. Um, um, that's unfortunate. Uh, my, my vision to, to get this functioning is to have um, functioning tenant associations to bring those concerns forward to the already existing board. And one of the central things that I think is being missed here, if you look up at the description of Northampton Housing Authority, you will find that it says a quasi-public entity. The Northampton Housing Authority is not a department in the mayor's office. The Housing Authority is not a department of the city of Northampton. The rules and regs used to, um, to regulate the Northampton Housing Authority are the same in every other single housing authority within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I am not aware of anything different um, that's being done um, on that fashion. So I basically think that um, there are bumps in the road, um, as with, with any entity, but I do think that we are getting uh, the job done. And I think that one of the other things that happens is we have a grievance process in the bylaws for tenants to go through. Instead, what we're getting is they call city council. They call the Hampshire Gazette. They don't go through the grievance process. Now, I, I, I'm sure that a lot of people don't even know it exists, and that's on us. That's one of our faults, that we need better education and better communication. But one of the things that I have, I have tried to do as chair, I think, a little bit more than my predecessor, was have an ample time for tenant issues. We usually don't have employee issues um, at our monthly meetings, but I try to have try to have time for tenant issues. And then recently, with this air conditioner fiasco, um, we had a public comment period, and that's fine because I think we need to communicate and we need to learn what people's feelings are. And I, and I think we will get the job done. But I think this is a I think both of these proposals, even in its amended form, are a rush to judgment. Um, I have my own skeptical thoughts about why they might have been created in the first place, but I'm not going to voice those here tonight because it's pure speculation. But what I am trying to say is that, that the current board is committed to make the Northampton Housing Authority um, bigger and better than it has been in the move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. My name is Edgardo Cancel. I'm a resident at Hampshire Heights 19B. I grew up here in Northampton, and uh, I can't help but to be extremely frustrated um, after hearing this man talk. Um, I have been going to all of the Housing Authority board meetings for the last couple of years, and I have been consistently shut down, mm -hmm. consistently told to sit down that my time is up. I have been consistently interrupted by the director, executive director, as I'm trying to make a point. Um, we need a lot more representation at the Housing Authority. I was delighted to hear when this um, first proposal came up. And by the way, nobody was consulted about this. Nobody. But I'm glad that somebody took the initiative to think about people like me, people like my neighbors, who have been suffering from our rights being violated on a daily basis, our lease contracts being violated on a daily basis, our living conditions being horrendous, our properties deteriorating by the day, and nobody has been doing anything about it until somebody decided that enough is enough. That one person was the person that came up with the uh, a petition about the AC air conditioners. When that public outcry happened, a lot more eyes were open and other folks in the community started to realize that maybe there's a problem here. And so 
I am, I am really grateful that somebody took the initiative to put such a um, proposal forward. And no, I'm not crazy about the amendment. I would really like six more members and all members be residents of the Northampton uh, uh, public housing. But I also don't think that that propose, initial proposal was going to go anywhere. Everybody I talked to, I reached out to the mayor's office, I reached out, reached out to a lot of different people, and nobody think this would go through. Um, I think the um, current amendment to that proposal is much more realistic, and it would at least give us at least one more representative at the housing authority, and somebody, an advocate from the housing partnership, of which I've been a member of for a couple of years, and these types of things we discuss in those meetings, we try to figure out how to best support people from low and moderate income that reside in the city. So I have faith in that committee at least putting someone forward uh, to represent the voice of residents that's much needed. But to come here and hear the chairman of the Housing Authority saying we're doing a good job, um, it's really frustrating because they're not doing a good job. It's almost abuse what's going on at the Housing Authority and with the residents. And you know why an election might not work in Northampton within the residents? Because they are so disfranchised. We are so dis disenfranchised and so commonly and consistently shut down that we have no faith in the system. We have no faith in our leaders. We have no faith in our city councilors. We have no faith in our mayor that something's going to change because this has been happening for a long time. That's why the only reason why I think an election among residents might not work is because people will not come out and vote because they'll think, why? Why should I do that? Nothing's going to change. So this amendment to this seems a little more realistic to me because at least we can start making a little bit of headway, a little bit of something to start something because something needs to happen. So thank you, Councillor O'Donner, for the original uh, um, uh, proposal and for the amendment um, because, again, I feel that it's something. We're, we're getting somewhere here. This conversation that we're having here is important, and I appreciate you all listening, and I appreciate you all thinking about it and how we're going to take care of this. But there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems at the Housing Authority, and we need to do something as a community. We need to come together. And by the way, the new appointed uh, person on the Board Authority, uh, uh, Housing Authority, it's not from Florence Heights, it's from Hampshire Heights, my fellow neighbor Emily who's here, and there's a difference. There's a difference. Um, and I'm not trying to knock down Florence Heights. Florence Heights just doesn't have a voice anywhere. They have no representation. But we at Hampshire Heights have been working really hard as a community to come together and try to make some positive changes. We have a lot of cool things going on at Hampshire Heights none of which we are being supported by the Housing Authority, but we're still doing it. And organizations from the community are helping us, but there's nobody helping foreign sites. There's nobody out there supporting that community. I used to live there, so I know how the conditions have deteriorated there as well. And there's no representation there. That's why I say there's a difference. There's a difference because we've been working hard uh, to have somebody um, uh, with a voice, and we finally have somebody in there. Um, that can at least voice the, the opinions and the concerns of the residents, but we need more. We need more. Now, I don't know that even this amendment is going to cut it, but we need more. And I plead to you as city councilors, as a body of, uh, of leadership in the city, to continue to think about us, people from, um, from the low-income community here in public housing. There's a lot of things that are going wrong, a lot of rights that are being violated. Um, and we are consistently shut down when we try to speak up. Grievance process? Grievance process, yes, we need to talk about that. Because nobody knows about that. Nobody knows how to go about it. That's why the mayor gets calls. That's why random people get called, because we don't know. 
Because when we try to go through the proper channels and the proper process, we keep getting shut down, ignored, time after time. So no, there's no grievance process because it doesn't, it doesn't get put to use. There's no resident advisory board. Why? I don't know. But I want to be on it. I have a lot to say, clearly. And I'm not, I'm not going to take all your time. I, I, I've said enough. Thank you. I'm Elizabeth Humphrey, um, 293 Prospect Street, and I am not a resident of um, public housing, but um, I just, I wasn't even going to speak, I just wanted to come in here, and, um, but after I heard that man, uh, the, where is he, is he here? Yes, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but uh, one of the board members, you know, use the excuse of uh, quasi-government um, telling me that there's nothing we can do because they're in between government and uh, private, um, which is a huge problem and it's been coming up more and more in the general public, not just in Northampton, but all over Massachusetts. Um, and actually uh, there was um, someone running for auditor for the Green Party, Jed Stamos, who actually would, um, on his platform, was to work toward um, abolishing quasi-government because it is so easily um, corrupted and uh, money mismanagement, uh, no accountability to, um, in, in a normal democratic process. So. I just really highly resent the fact that you use that um, status as telling me that I can't try and help improve people that live in the town that I live in. Um, they are just as much of my town as anyone who owns a home in this town. And um, I think that uh, I just needed to say that I was really highly resentful of that comment. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope this passes, and I really appreciate the efforts that O'Donnell has put into this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I just, yeah. I, I want to reassert that when, when addressing, refer remarks to, <coughs> to the committees as opposed to the individuals in the audience. You, you can still make the reference, but okay. please address the remarks though. All right, I, I apologize, I apologize. Thank you. Thanks. Would like, would else like to speak? Good evening, everybody. My name is Scott Chabon. I'm from 1195 Stroud Avenue in Florence. I'm also on the housing partnership. We didn't talk to each other before all came tonight, but we clearly all care. I'd like to thank Councillor O'Donnell for putting this proposal forward. Um, both of them, I found out about the second one today when I read in the newspaper. Um, I had attempted to send comments before I kept on missing the mark on where to send them. So to the first proposal, I really like that it was elected. Uh, if you uh, follow school reforms and school policies around the country, one of the things that comes up is when schools are closed in this community that participation in democracy generally goes down because school committees are a path for people to get involved in government for the first time. And so like, with this proposal to have elected representatives from the public housing, <coughs> from public housing, it would be a path for them into government for the first time in the same fashion. So I was disappointed to see that removed. I understand from comments from DHCD that they're not going to be very supportive of it. We may consider that we want to push the state on that rather than take their <coughs> initial pushback. But I do think even as an appointed board, it will be a step forward. Um, is this a form where you guys can talk back or is this one direction? It, it, it's rather informal to form so we can talk back. Uh, 
So question, so I understand from the solicitor's letter and from the DHCD memo why it was switched from elected to appointed. Can you speak to why it went from six to two more? Certainly, yep. <laughs> Um, thank you for the question, and <clears throat> I'd like to thank everyone who's made comments so far. Um, look at this is something that is a political compromise. And when I put forward the original one, which was six additional tenant commissioners to be elected, I believed in it. I think that doing it that way is possible. Let me give you some examples. It's not really part of the proposal anymore in my mind, but I'll, I'd like to say, say this anyway so people know that this is based in, in facts. Um, there are many other jurisdictions in the United States that have greater tenant representation on their boards, and they elect tenants. Washington, D.C. has an 11-person board, and three of them are elected, three tenants. New York State elects tenants, usually with a seven-person board like the model I'm proposing for Northampton. Same thing with Connecticut, North Carolina. Federal law establishes housing authorities through various acts of Congress, and then local housing authorities sort of implement them on a local level, and there's a wide number of models that can be successful. Um, to change this is something that takes political will at the local level and then at the legislative level. Um, I've also had conversations with our incoming state senator-elect and state representative-elect, and I have full confidence that they will be supportive, um, uh, broadly speaking, of an effort to increase representation in the, in the housing authority. The decisions I made relative to uh, the election piece and the number of tenants are purely, I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it a political decision. Because at the end of the day, to me, I'm just the kind of guy, it doesn't do me any good to be a purist and to <coughs> fight a losing battle if we don't wind up with some forward progress uh, for the actual, for my constituents. It was said earlier that it was a problem for residents of public housing to call your city councilors. That's not a problem. Call your city councilors. Call the mayor, because we represent the people in public housing just as we represent the people anywhere else. Um, I want to see progress in this area. Um, I'm not sure I have a more specific answer than that. I'm not always good at getting votes, but I'm sort of good at counting them, and I know when a certain proposal is going to go forward, and I made uh, a compromise that I think can be successful in Northampton, but I wanted to acknowledge what people have said about their feelings about democratic representation. Uh, my answer is that this is a proposal I think can pass. Thank you, Councillor. I guess I like the Pierce proposal the most, um, but I would like to see progress moving forward as well, so I support the revised proposal. Um, Perhaps it can at least encourage them, if not direction, for whichever representatives are added to try to make sure they're involved in each community. I think I'd like to see, rather than, I think the proposal I was within allows individuals who are living outside of the main communities to be one of the representatives. I think they're probably the most effective if they're from the larger communities and can speak to conditions that are affecting that larger population rather than if they're off at smaller sites. Um, as a member of the housing partnership, I can also speak to that we have been kind of looking over at what's happening to the housing authority, but we don't have a lot of information. Uh, having cross-posting essentially uh, between the boards would be a way to loop us in. And since our task under the city ordinance is to look, is focused on low, people below amount of incomes, it's a natural fit in terms of bringing the city's involvement with the housing authority closer in. Please, my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, just, to, just to clarify, um, one second, Mr. Brown. So 
it, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, the order says that um, the a resident of Northampton was assisted by the Housing Authority through a rental subsidy program. So if your question was whether they needed to reside in Northampton, even if they didn't reside in the Housing Authority property, um, I think the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, I was thinking like that there's a handful of like larger sites for the Housing Authority and then um, the rental subsidy would be kind of anywhere in the city. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it would be more useful to have the tenant representation be from one of the larger sites so they can speak to conditions at that site yep. that has more people at it than at a smaller location in the community. Got it. Thank you for your comment. So, Liz, I go in and buy a straw meal. Um, not resident of public housing and not associated with that housing <coughs> partnership, just comes to meetings. Um, and there, there are two things that sort of struck me as I was listening to everybody else's comments. And, um, one thing is just when we're deciding what's worth n nudging the state about, what's worth maybe making somebody in the state, annoyed with us about like what's worth pushing about, most of the people in the city council are homeowners. And I don't know if any of you have ever lived in public housing. But I want you to stop and think about what it would be like to be a renter, to not have a choice about moving. You can't, if you don't like your situation, you're not in the position, you don't have the flexibility to decide to move. You're stuck. And part of that means is if you go through a grievance process, if you talk to somebody, if you piss somebody off, you're stuck. And that's a very specific situation that's very specific to public housing. That kind of impact, <coughs> that kind of wanting to advocate for yourself and your neighbors, and also being afraid to. And we've heard a lot of that. And I think regardless of what goes forward, this city and the city councilors who represent people in public housing need to think really hard about the culture <coughs> happening there because yes the housing authority is kind of under us and kind of under the state and that's difficult but the people who live in public housing are, are citizens of and they're represented by the city council and i think that we can be more proactive as a community about supporting those voices and the other thing that I just sort of putting together, what Councilor O'Donnell had said about putting something forward that can get passed, and what the resident said about being really uncomfortable with an appointee, that if we can't have elections and strong favor elections, but that if there were some sort of mechanism, I know not every property has a tenant association, but some sort of mechanism for people within the public housing to make a recommendation about who was appointed some sort of opportunity or forum for people's voices to be heard that would also encourage a level of transparency about the appointments that might make people more comfortable and trusting with the outcome one of the things that we've heard a lot about is just <coughs> people really feel like their trust has been betrayed and that makes any sort of process with representation really, really difficult. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bond. Please. Yes, yeah, thank you. Oh, sorry. Hi. <clears throat> Emily Laufer. Um, I'm at Hampshire Heights 10B. I'm also uh, part of the Northampton Housing Authority Board, but I'm speaking on my behalf. Um, I just want to say that I have total imposter syndrome when it comes to being on the Northampton Housing Authority Board. Um, and so if there were even just two more people um, who are residents or who come from somewhere that is similar to me, I would feel so much stronger serving um, the community. And so I just wanted to say that um, 
I feel like the proper um, low income properties in Northampton are already truly disregarded by the community in general. Um, and that can be reflected in all spaces, right? And so if I'm by myself or having, you know, I think there's one other resident on the board, but again, I feel that I would be disregarded in many of my opinions, but if I had just two more, um, I think that would make a huge difference in at least starting to um, be recognized in the greater community. That's all. Hi. I was the woman who wrote the letter and requested anonymity, Jane Doe. Um, but this is really important. So I think you should read it and I'll sit and comment after because it was not read and it's pretty important. Uh, it, is that, so I mean, as long as you're asking me to, we yeah. didn't read it because it was. Um, it was really, I mean, it was suggested none, that it nothing was, was, it was discussed that was in it that was relevant to the HCVP program. Okay, just so you understand, we did it to, pro as yeah. to protect it. It was my name, not the content. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I don't know if I should say this, but to the media, I'm a domestic violence victim and my security is at, at risk. And so Jane Doe would be great, but I'm happy to tell you all who I am and where I live. I just want to remind you that we're being audio and video recorded right now. Okay. Also, also, it's a unfortunately it's it's embedded in the public record, so okay. it's, so, so some of the freedom of information requests could mm -hmm. locate. Keep to keep so Jane we'll Doe. Keep you as Jane Doe. Yeah, I mean, this is at some point the fear. I have to be able to participate again. In, you know, it's I'm important. happy to read your letter, and we just did it to protect your. Um, I I also recommend that you you sit to the back of the room. Okay. To yes. Avoid the camera. Um, okay, so this is to the City Council Committees on Community Resources and Legislative Matters. Any change in the structure of the Northampton Housing Authority must be representative. The O'Donnell proposal in its current form is not representative of the new <coughs> Housing Choice Voucher Program. Pro voucher vo housing Choice Voucher Program program participants, who nearly double the number of those residing in buildings operated by or on behalf of the NHA. By only allowing tenants residing in NHA-owned and operated buildings to vote and serve in these six seats, all HCVP program participants are effectively excluded. The NHA's jurisdiction is well beyond residents in buildings operated by or on behalf of the NHA, and the board governs the entire NHA. The HCVP constituency is approximately 1,200 in number and reside in as geographically diverse locations as Goshen, Haydenville, Leeds, Williamsburg, West Hampton, Middlefield, East Hampton, and Cummington. All would be excluded from the process if the proposal is left in its current form. NHA residents are not all domiciled in the city, yet they are all under the NHA umbrella. The proposal in its current form does not reflect an understanding of the challenges faced by HCVP participants. Because this constituency is geographically dispersed and disconnected, conducting an election inclusive of this population without violating privacy and confidentiality concerns is impossible. For example, the NHA cannot release HCVP participant residential addresses to potential candidates residing in NHA-owned and operated buildings for campaigning without violating privacy and confidentiality laws. For victims of domestic violence, secure residences and private addresses are paramount to their safety. Relatedly, even if the proposal was modified to include both HCVP participants and those residing in NHA-owned and operated buildings, neither group interested in serving on the board could campaign to the, HC <coughs> could campaign to the HCVP constituency because of their geographic diversity and the confidentiality issues noted above. Working with the state legislature to amend Section 5A of Mass General Law 121B towards an inclusive appointment process for tenant board members that incorporate HCVP participants or geographically dispersed and NHA residents who reside in the city may be worth consideration. The HCVP program is the largest single federal housing program in Massachusetts for extremely and very low income households and is crucial to state efforts to assist those low income groups, yet it differs greatly from public housing admissions, occupancy, and administration. An understanding of the program and how it and the public housing program managed by the NHA are administered is important for any potential new member of the NHA board. Voucher holders experience great difficulty in securing eligible housing in Northampton for a variety of reasons, including reducing reduced FMRs, 
low vacancy rate, and competition from five college community students living off campus. The HCVP helps low-income households pay their rent by providing a voucher that covers the difference between 30% of their income and their gross rent to a fixed amount. The voucher is, quote, mobile, end quote, and if a household moves, they can use it to rent their next unit and can be used to rent a unit anywhere in the U.S. that meets HUD quality standards as long as there is a housing agency willing to administer the voucher. The NHA is managing relationships with approximately 1,200 separate private landlords on behalf <coughs> of these individual tenants and families throughout our region. This is critical as HCVP participants are increasingly being turned away by landlords across the country who refuse to accept the vouchers in favor of more profitable tenants. Mm -hmm. In an era when state oversight has stepped back from public housing, it is critical that the Phantom City Council Committee on Community Resources and Legislative Matters gets this right. Perhaps a resident advisory board would be of use. Interactivity with the NHA through its website might be another inclusive option. Local housing authorities funded by state and federal governments with over a billion dollars per year in Massachusetts are run by executive directors for which hiring and firing power falls to an appointed board. Any new commissioner should be able to both evaluate the performance of the executive director and be confident in their ability to be a fiduciary of the housing authority. But before any changes are made, the process must be representative, inclusive, fair, and sane. Yours. Thank you. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Feel so, free to stay there you. if you're more comfortable. Yeah, I'll just, I'll try. <laughs> okay. So you have made some changes to the draft, which I think is helpful. Um, the thing that's not there is the inclusion of the voucher participants in the surrounding towns who you're still responsible for. The NHA is taking care of all of these tenants and so those HCVP participants need to be represented and an understanding of the issues they face really is important I think for a commissioner, any commissioner. Um, so that was one comment that I had and then the election, I, I couldn't figure out how this could be legal because of the confidentiality issues. So releasing those 1,200 individuals different, different addresses to a potential person that was running might put them at risk. So I, I just couldn't figure out how that could be done. So perhaps you can look into that. I thought that was important. Um, uh, sorry. I don't understand, it, it feels like everyone's sort of screaming at each other, and I, I feel like we're so bright here in Hampshire County, and that we have this great, it's hard, we have this terrific new executive director who's come here, she's a, a female leader, we're about to send the fabulous board to Beacon Hill, we've got a female police chief, we have a great president of Smith College, and I feel like we should rally around her and um, support her, so it's really hard to watch all the conflict because um, I don't feel safe. Like it makes me think other people that are participating in the HCVP program and in housing are feet, they can't sleep at night. So I'm really hoping we can fix this um, soon. It's really important. Um, let's see. The DHCD is for the responsible person. I think that's the, or the entity that people should appeal to. I, I do understand that the people that reside in Northampton can call you, but in terms of the next governmental entity, that's who would be above the housing authority. So that's something that's important to think about. Um, so yeah, the decentralization is really important. Um, yeah. So I hope it was clear what I wrote and that perhaps we can have commissioners that don't scream at the executive director and they can lower their voices and work collaboratively. I understand that um, that's what's supposed to happen and I, I'm really bothered by what's going on. I, I don't understand why everyone's sort of fighting and pointing the finger, and um, I don't know, it's really unsettling. So 
if there's a way that we can get together and solve some of this, that would be terrific, I think, for everyone. I feel like the executive director is probably in a really difficult position because of all this, and it's hard for her to, to execute our responsibilities, and I can't think of anything more difficult than coming into this position when she did, and the sort of the year after, with the elections and the changes at the federal level, and the changes with HUD, and how embarrassing it must be to see all of these newspaper articles in the paper about, you know, air conditioners, and people are starving, you know? It's, it's not about an air conditioner, it's a luxury to have that. I don't think other housing authorities buy air conditioners, or I just don't think that's, I think it's not something we should all be fighting about. I think there are broader things to think about in leading the housing authority forward. Um, and it concerns me, and I, and I do think that we need to support her. She is the executive director, and whatever's gone on in the past, um, if there's still conflict and it, it's a problem, I think I think we should try to resolve that and get behind her. And you know, I don't think the screaming is good. Um, I, I can feel the tension here. I could feel it. I attended a meeting <coughs> last month, um, and I've I've not witnessed that. I tried to say, you know, we're ladies and gentlemen. We don't scream at each other. And this is Hampshire County, and this is not what we do. And tried to say. Well, <coughs> There are different constituencies. There are 1,200 voucher holders. There are half that number in public housing buildings. Different needs, completely different. The voucher <coughs> holders are mobile. They can move anywhere. They can move to surrounding towns. Often they can't find affordable housing in Northampton, so they have to move into other areas, but yet the housing authority is responsible for them. And so the decisions you make about this um, are relevant to them, even though they can't vote for you. I think it's important to think about them. Uh, there's a lot of funding at stake. A lot of people have their eyes on us. Ben Carson was in Boston last week. Um, there's just a lot to think about. I, I think you really need to look at this, and even the second revised draft doesn't provide an opportunity for others that reside in those surrounding towns, but who's vouchers are administered by the NHA, which is the seat, to even be involved. And they have issues, you know, they're concerned about allocations at the federal level and all kinds of things that no one here has discussed. I've heard, I've sat through the entire meeting and no one's talked about them. They're 1,200 in number. She, the Housing Authority is responsible for managing all of those people's relationships with landlords. That's a huge undertaking. All new, Everything that's coming out of Washington has to be thought through. That's if everyone's screaming at everyone that's working there, how do they do that work and bring that capital in? I mean, someone needs to fix this. Help. We just need to collaborate. There are very, very educated, bright people in this town. We can do this. There are Smith, they will send down students. People will come. People will help. It's not that we need six people that are tenants on the board. We need talent on the board. Just like we have a talented executive director with private sector experience that she can bring in and say, these are our deliverables. This is what we want to do. These are our goals. We, we're so blessed, blessed to have it. You know, We need talent on the board. People that understand policy and students that care about government or residents that really, I mean, it, it's not, we can have resident advisory councils, we can have a website that is interactive, and resident advisory councils can sit with people that are commissioners, but we need talent, people that have financial backgrounds, people that understand government. Um, you know, this old boys network thing that people are talking about, it's over. It's over. I mean, women, we need to collaborate. We need people that care about working together. This is a group, there are seniors that are not in this room that you don't see, but that they represent. You know, They have to take care of. There are people that are in wheelchairs that aren't here. We have to protect them, we can't scream at each other. I watched 
a commissioner yell at the executive director. I was almost in tears. I was shaking. I thought, I can't even speak. I'm scared to be here. And he's screaming. And I thought, and the new commissioner who is here was sitting there. And I thought, how does she feel watching this screaming? It's her first meeting. She must be scared to death. You know, we need, she needs a mentor. She needs to sit down with the executive director, learn. And we can't yell. So could you please teach them how not to scream and yell and embarrass and disparage each other? I mean, it's just, it frightens me. I mean, I can't sleep at night thinking about it and then thinking about other people. Anyway, I'm sorry. It's just, I, I risked a lot to talk, but I'm so passionate about this. It means so much. So hopefully you can, perhaps they can have a retreat on how to comport themselves or something or learn. I don't think it's finished, the current draft. We need more time. Thank you for your comments. Uh, before we go to the next person, oh, if you could hold one second. I know that Councilor O'Donnell would like to address the, the direct question that you asked him. May I just very briefly? Um, just to recognize the, the importance of uh, the comments you heard from the speaker and like to thank the speaker for making them. I know it, it, it's difficult uh, to do that. But I'd like for the record just, just to be clear, to, to respond to some of the points. Um, uh, no, um, how to say this, no privacy or confidentiality laws will be abridged or changed as a result of anything in here. That's an important thing for people to understand. Um, even if the election piece were still part of it, that wouldn't have been the case. Uh, those confidentiality laws are not part of this proposal. So they, would, I can't say I really have encyclopedic knowledge of what they are, but whatever they are, they would not be changed. Um, the other piece is, it is true that, um, you know, the roughly 2,200 people who receive housing assistance from the Northampton Housing Authority, most of them are uh, recipients of rental subsidy programs, federal and state, and actually do agree that those are very important. Um, constituency to represent. So that's one of the changes in this. Um, a commissioner could be one of those people. Um, I will say it's a policy choice whether you also require that such a person to be a resident of the city. Um, I heard that perhaps that is n not necessary. Uh, uh, and um, I'm open on that point, to be perfectly honest with you. Some may say the residency is important, others may not. Um, Finally, I just think it's important to point out that that's a really good point because it shows how much housing has changed over history. I mean, the laws that have set up local housing authorities, <clears throat> that's a current deficiency in the law. They totally ignore representation for people who receive rental subsidies. The current tenant in the housing authority, the, of the, the current one out of five tenants in the housing authority must be a resident in an actual unit owned and operated by the housing authority. You know, since that law was written, the use of vouchers has gone up, and the total number of public housing units in the United States has gone down. Um, so that is an important thing, and I think that is actually something that I hope has been addressed in some of the um, revisions. But I did want to make the comment just so people feel secure in the fact that the privacy and confidentiality piece is, is not going to change in any way. So thank you for letting me make that comment. Senator elect. Thank you. Hi everyone, Joe Cummer, 186 Federal Street. Um, I came tonight to speak on behalf and strong support of Councillor O'Donnell's proposal. Uh, and actually I had thought of something to say to you and then I heard Emily uh, and uh, the speaker too before and Emily actually spoke more beautifully than I could have ever spoken about, and I think captures the heart, Councillor O'Donnell, of what you're trying to do, which is that we need more voices of those most affected by public housing to feel the kind of powerful solidarity that would come by increasing the number. So that when a, a tenant is not alone, you know, they have a sustained support, um, which is, I believe, critical. I believe it's critical because uh, it will strengthen voices, it will strengthen the ideas and the concerns or the hopes or the dreams that they hope to bring, and it actually helps, I think it's going to be creating better policy 
Um, and so as Councillor O'Donnell spoke, I, you know, I am in strong support of this and in strong support of the leadership here in Northampton. I'm really grateful for your service. I'm grateful for these hearings and all of the important comments that are going to make, I think, this stronger and sharpen it. And I'm actually, I would be very excited to work with Councillor O'Donnell should, should you want to pull this forward, you know, to, to really explore this at the state level. I think there's merit to this. I think it's, it's good-hearted at a time where we need good-hearted policy. Uh, and it's, it's putting the right people at the table to make the decisions that will affect them the most. Uh, so thank you very much for your service. Thanks for letting thank me you. speak on behalf of this. Thank you. Next. Anyone else interested in speaking? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yes? Oh, okay. <laughs> We're all ready for you. <laughs> um, so again, is there anyone else who would like to speak in this order? Uh, or have any questions or no? All right, thank you very, very much for coming and telling us your, your thoughts on this. Um, so now, both of our committees, we're going to... We're both convening. We're going to have yeah. to deliberate on this, on, on the agenda. It's uh, first okay. legislative matters, but actually we should do community resources first, I think. Oh, and I just saw it read upside down, so I... Would, I mean, so would we be able to deliberate all of us? And I think then, it makes the most and sense. I think it'd be, just it would be, it would be absurd and yeah. unendurable <laughs> to watch us yeah. <laughs> So we're going to, Good. we're going to deliberate collectively. That's the purpose of this. We pretend we're all in the same room. Um, and again, I would defer to Councilor Shara since you've already, you, you've run this dance before, so it's, you know, well, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to open it up to both committees and, and uh, hear what people have to say. Thank you. Um, I do want to thank everybody who came out tonight, um, and especially the uh, two Housing Authority board members who spoke. Uh, thank you for your service, and all of the residents and anyone else who might be a just interested party in Northampton. Um, I, I do want to acknowledge that I also, prior to coming to the City Council, served for many years on the Northampton Housing Authority. I was actually um, Commissioner Jones's uh, predecessor as the Labor Representative um, from Northampton. As folks may or may not know, the, the four required by the state are, um, the four that are appointed by the Mayor are a, a representative of organized labor, a tenant and then two citizen representatives and then uh, I think that um, uh, Commissioner Jones pointed out that in addition the governor's representative is also a tenant and I'm not sure if that's the woman who left if she's the governor's okay no, no. okay so um, so that's she's the, the most recent okay. oh, okay. Commissioner Brooks okay and I also did serve on the Northampton housing partnership for a number of years so those folks who came from that board too thank you very much for your participation um, I, I'm actually um, you know I, I had some difficulty with the initial um, version of the of the proposal for a number of reasons and um, definitely can understand why uh, Councilor O'Donnell may have amended this to a version that has much more chance of not only passing this city council, I'm, I'm speculating, but, um, and maybe the Senator-elect could confirm, but it seems as though this is something that would be more likely able to pass through the general court, given the fact that we would be the first city in Massachusetts to, um, introduce anything that anything like this so I mean it has merits in that I, I commend Councilor O'Donnell for his initiative and clearly there are clearly there are many issues and I remember them while serving on the housing authority I, I appreciated all the comments about civility and about um, being able to work together and and I and I'm hopeful too as I heard from at least one one commenter tonight that that can be possible. Um, 
in Ward 1. I have been involved in some of the inception, some of the work with uh, the uh, Hampshire Heights uh, Tenant Association with Mr. Ken South and trying to get that up and going. And, I, and as, uh, you know, Commissioner Jones pointed out that, um, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of education work that has to happen. We as city councilors can help people who are our constituents understand and know that there is a grievance procedure, you know, that there is a way, and that's, you know, that's part of a way that we can provide assistance. None of those things are part of this, of this particular proposal, but um, what I do appreciate is that, you know, there's, it, it's a change that will add, that will actually make Northampton's Housing Authority in its present um, configuration have three tenant representatives because one is appointed by the mayor by law, um, one happens to be a tenant, the one that's appointed by the governor, and then there would be a third if, if this pr proposal not only passes the city council but then is adopted by the general court. So there would always be at least two, and, um, and I think two, especially if it were a body of seven, um, it would be a body of seven if this is if this is uh, if this is adopted, uh, and two would be an appropriate number. I think it would be at least an appropriate number. There should be, and that's what this proposal does. So I'm I am in support of this, and I appreciate everybody's comments. Thanks. Um, I I apologize. I need to play a little catch up because you had a previous public meeting about this and I had a conflicting, we had uh, capital improvements that night so I was off at another, at another meeting. Um, but, um, so, so I wasn't there for that comment so I might be asking some questions that you've already, you've already dealt with. But the first question for Councillor Donald, before you drafted the original version of this, did you reach out to any of the commissioners or staff at the Housing Authority? I did not. You did not, okay. <clears throat> And have you spoken to them between that version and this version? Uh, we set up a public process. <clears throat> I made a point, excuse me, <clears throat> of encouraging members of the housing authority to attend. I reached out to the chair personally. Uh, subsequently, our administrative assistant reached out individually to each of the board members. At the last community meeting, one member of the housing authority uh, board attended, mm -hmm. other than uh, the one who spoke tonight. And additionally, the executive director appeared and also made comments and engaged in the public forum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the process, but not prior, not exactly. prior to. That's right. Um, and the other members here, how many of the other members of these two committees spoke individually to commissioners um, about what their, you know, what their feelings were about the authority as it presently is and their feeling about the proposals to change the board? You want to know among us? Oh, just, yeah, how many of this group spoke. Not all, but not all, but spoke to some of them. Um, yeah, because I spoke to some of them, and they, <coughs> the ones that I spoke to, I spoke to Marilyn and to Jerry. Those are the two that I could catch up with. They called me back right away, and they did say that you know they they would appreciate additional members to their board that had a skill set that would benefit the decision making process on the board. Uh, I know Attorney DeFazio was a member of that board for quite a while, mm -hmm. and they said we kind of miss somebody with a legal background on our right. board. And they said we could really, we could use people with specific specialties related to what our job is to assist us and advise us to do our job, you know, better than we can without people with those expertise. They said we don't need just bodies for the sake of bodies, but it would be helpful if whoever the appointing authority is would seek out people with a skill set that we think would be beneficial to us, you know, in managing managing property, because, you know, essentially they, at, they kind of, you know, they say they're quasi-governmental, but they're kind of like what a board of directors is in private industry. They set policy, but that's administered by their executive director. You know, they don't go around and contact employees directly, and they tend, you know, at, at, outside of their meetings not to deal a lot with the individual tenants. They supervise the executive director who supervises the staff to execute the policies that they set up. And I don't know if I'm right with this or not, but I think the air conditioner policy was not one that was brought through the board prior to being put in place. That, that, 
you know, when it came to you all, you weren't too pleased with it either. Um, and it, it should have, that kind of policy really should have gone to your board prior to being instituted by the executive director. So um, a little bit of breakdown there. Um, but I am disappointed that before the original draft was made that you all were contacted because that sort of feels like, you know, we're jumping on your authority without contacting you first. I really wish Councilor Donnelly had spoken to them before, before dropping this on them. Um, because I know I feel a little bit out of joint if, if another very public body jumped on my quasi-public body with, with a decision to try and change it without first communicating, say, hey, what can we do about this? How can we fix this? It, again, would have been a pop up, an opportunity to learn that this happened without your approval, you know, puts it kind of in a different light. I do think I can support the version that is here now. I think it was, it was correct, at least in my sense, that this change makes it easier for me to support this. Um, I too am a former member of the housing partnership, and I've been involved in the housing industry for a very long time, and I yeah. personally manage property. So I'm familiar with what it takes to keep buildings in good condition, keep tenants happy. I think I'm very responsive to my tenants when they have problems. Um, I know that's easier in the private sector than it is in the public sector, but you get used to dealing with the needs of people, and people need safe places to live. They need healthy environments to live in. And when you're doing, when you're managing, what is it, 700 some odd units you own and operate? It's a, it's a huge number, isn't it? Um, not to mention, all the vouchers that, and I have voucher tenants in my building. Um, it, it's a special thing to deal, um, it, it's a lot harder, frankly, dealing with the public entity than it is dealing privately, you know, and, e and even for the tenant, it's harder going through the public entity, um, but it works, and that communication is really important. So I just wanted to say I can support this version, and I would encourage for the, uh, the commissioners um, since the mayor is going to be appointing even more people, it might be good to let the mayor know the sort of skilled people you'd like to have. The housing partnership, frankly, we look for people to be on the housing partnership that have skills relative to housing. You might be able to say, hey, we could use somebody with this skill or with that skill that would be a, a real benefit to your board uh, and to make you stronger and more, more effective. But I do want to say, Councilor O'Donnell, I can support the current version, and thank you for, thank you very much for updating it. I appreciate that. Thank you for those comments. Thank you. May I um, <coughs> just Please. briefly some additional information? Um, I think it's important to understand, and um, I'll just say that it's important for everyone to understand what the Housing Authority Board is. I think we have a tendency to believe that they are somehow an advisory or an oversight board. They provide advice and they provide oversight and they do make policy, mm -hmm. but they are the governing board. <clears throat> the executive director only has authority because it is delegated to the executive director by the board. I want that to be clear. Um, so when we talk about the functioning of the housing authority, you know, if there is a problem, for example, the air conditioners were not, were put in without consulting the housing authority board. That's one problem. But then if the Housing Authority doesn't take ownership of the problem, that's another problem. The Housing Authority is a responsibility to create a political environment whereby they demand to be consulted. And to me, part of the skills that we're talking about here, in addition to specific things like having an attorney would be good, and um, yeah, that, that's actually an excellent point, is to have incentives aligned so that you, know, you have people like tenants and housing advocates who are going to demand that the Housing Authority function in a healthy way. And so that's another thing that's very important about this. I think, again, if you have tenants on there and housing advocates, then the Housing Authority Governing Board is more likely to succeed with those comments making sense. <coughs> uh, Councilor Murphy, when you spoke with the commissioners, and I admit I did not, did they object to the proposal? Did they have an objection to uh, tenancy representation? Mm. Um, no, their, their objection when I spoke to them was the fact that they hadn't been spoken to prior to this thing getting off the ground and the initial proposal being made. They felt like, hey, we're here in the trenches trying to do a job that we're appointed to. Um, and, you know, Councilor uh, or Commissioner uh, Richards was a member of this body, so she certainly knows what it's like to be here. I think they felt like, gee, I wish somebody had talked to us before this got rolling 
because uh, we would have liked to have provided some insight as to what goes on here and, and what our circumstances are. Um, they didn't object to tenant representation. In fact, they mentioned that with the membership they have now, there's 40% tenant representation, not by design, but simply by the fact that the governor, governor's appointment is a tenant as well, and that isn't a requirement. So they have the required tenant, but the governor's appointee is also a tenant, so they felt like, you know, of, of the five of us, two of us are, two of the members are tenants now. So uh, they did not object. I think they objected to the initial version, which more than doubled the size of the body, and they felt that that would make it kind of un unwieldy. I mean, that's more people running the housing authority than are running the city. Um, so they sort of objected to that, and they, they said, gee, we, don't, we wouldn't necessarily mind more members, but we want members with skill sets that are useful to our administration of the system that, that bring things to the board that we would find useful in decision making and advice from other members that have expertise related to housing, be it an attorney um, or somebody, you know, somebody with property management background. They felt that that would be helpful. Uh, I, th I think they objected to six people that didn't, that, you know, that were from uh, the tenant base that, pro that wouldn't bring the skills they thought they needed, but I don't think they'd object to adding a second guaranteed tenant to the one they have now, and hopefully somebody from the housing partnership, again, that, that body are people that tend to be involved in the housing industry in one way or another, and somebody from that group could bring the kind of expertise that I think they said would be useful to them. Um, but I think it would be great for when the mayor's appointing to hear from the chair of the board or some of the commissioners to say, <coughs> we really could use somebody with this skill or that skill that would bring something to the table that would make our process better. But they didn't, I don't think they'd object to another guaranteed tenant position. I didn't, just don't think they wanted to be overwhelmed as six more commissioner tenants would have done to them. But I don't think they mind the guarantee of two because they have two now. Quiet, please. So the uh, are you, uh, yeah no no I, I think yeah, no, I'm not quite done. Is the I mean the term managing property or providing service for tenants is two sometimes not inseparable issues. But the fact is it's not just managing property; it's managing property to provide um, the, the best circumstances for the tenants. And as such, that's a skill set that I would imagine tenant representation would bring that might be missing from, say, a lawyer who is probably not living in public housing by any chance, or someone with management skills uh, in property management, not somebody who's living in public housing, would have, uh, as they say in anthropology, that you have an etic and an emic perspective. An etic perspective is one from the outside where you observe other cultures and you make presumptions based on that. An emic perspective is that from within the culture, uh, something that's more informed, something that has, and, and also, you know, obviously your, <laughs> your motivations tend to be possibly more towards self-interest, like providing yourself with better living circumstances. I under, so I think in that respect, this is, this is wholly appropriate. I, I, I actually agree. I think, you know, the initial proposal actually had me pretty excited. I also, recognized and acknowledged the the really pushing a really big rock up a very steep hill and the prospect of having rolling back with no impact other than a lot of people getting crushed and their hopes and dreams getting crushed in this. The I thing that well if I may I'm still, yeah, I'm still finish, yeah, yeah thank you. Um, the the fact that the compromise, and we'll call it that for lack of a better term, but the compromise actually does, in fact, get that rock farther uphill. How far? It may be kicked back down. I, it, it was very, very reassuring to hear uh, the Senator-elect's comments, um, because that's not a lip service re response to this. That actually is a deeply held, devoted commitment to someone who clearly has represented that as her ethos as long as I've known her. So, so I'm comfortable with that. Um, but of course, she is. She will be introducing this to a body that we don't know the constituency of, and we, we, we're throwing <coughs> our, 
folks in the, in the legislature. Now, and the problem, part of the frustration from all of this, of course, is there's, there's so many divisions here. There's, and who has authority? Who has, under what aegis does everyone fall? Uh, and I think part of the frustration the tenants have expressed with, say, the city council's response or lack, or perceived lack thereof, or the mayor's for that matter, is our authority is rather limited when we're dealing with I mean, Ben Carson has more authority than us, and he knows far less than we do, which is nice. <laughs> but, the, but there's a difference, I've always said, in an elected representation. There's authority, and then there's influence. And we do carry influence. This exerts influence. This exerts, this is in response to not something that, it's not the air conditioners. This is not a reaction to the air conditioners. This is an endemic, chronic situation that has existed since public housing was established. There is an attitude, there's a cultural attitude of division that where people who are living in subsidized housing or housing that's funded by tax dollars, they are somehow beholden to the rest of us. That they have to make accommodations based on the fact that we're doing you a favor. And that, and, and that, is, a, that is repugnant. It's a horrible attitude because that's not how that works. It's not how it's supposed to work. And it's and unfortunately it's been a grotesque cultural uh, phenomenon <coughs> that has been aggravated and expanded on in recent years. And I just excited at the prospect of a little pushback from a community from this community that would be doing unprecedented, an, uh, an unprecedented request. And it's kind of absurd that this is unprecedented. But the fact is that we were, that Councilor O'Donnell has had the courage to say, let's give it a try. Let's try it. Let's see what we can do. And I, I'm psyched to support any iteration of this. Just simply enough to say, there a change is critical. It's not. I. I am not going to blame the commissioners. That's not fair because I think. I think has been described. The onus upon the commissioners has been is immense, and what is expected of them is is way larger than we're prepared to understand. I think at this point, I also understand as an elected official the same thing. There's there's a lot of assumptions about what we can and cannot do, or what we how we fail or how we succeed. So I'm not going to I'm not going to project that on the commissioners by any stretch. I I know several of them. I know them to all the good and decent thoughtful people with the best intentions. But it's a structural problem and a cultural problem and um, I'm grateful that you've uh, invested the energy. I don't think I hope it's not quixotic. I will do whatever I can to uh, see this move forward. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Murphy's asked to respond, and then I'm going to go to Councilor Klein after you respond. Okay. Well, I, I do want to object to the, the perception, anthropologically, that you know there's something unique about coming from inside a public housing situation. Every issue that somebody in public housing brought up here today was an issue that one of my tenants would have brought up. There, there's nothing special. You want a safe, clean place to live. You, you want appliances that work. You want a nice environment for your kids if you have kids. I mean, the, the concept that there are different expectations from people in public housing than there are from people in private housing, I don't think we should make that distinction because you all, everybody wants the same thing. A clean, safe place to work where their utilities are working, their stove works, everything's, everything works and they feel safe and the community feels safe to them. Um, I don't want to say, well, public housing is different, those people have different needs. No, they want to be respected by the management of their building, they want their unit to be safe, they want their complex to be safe, and when they call, they want respect and they want service. That, I, you know, I don't want to make a difference between people in public housing and people in private housing, because there shouldn't be a difference. The people should be treated with respect, and they should get the services they need. Um, to that extent, yeah, I, I think there should be, I'm comfortable with two tenant representatives, but I don't want to say, well, there's got to be, because 
they're different and their housing situation is different. I think we're here because their housing situation is different and we don't like the fact that it is. We think it should be the same as everybody else's and we're encouraging the Housing Authority Board of Commissioners through their management to make a parity between the public housing they manage and the private housing that other people enjoy. I don't think we want to stigmatize public housing residents by saying, oh, you're, you know, you're a little bit different. You're not. You have the same rights and you should expect the same thing from the people that manage your buildings as people do in the private sector. I think it's important to, to not make a distinction. Everybody's expectations for quality housing should be the same. Uh, deep apologies, Council Klein. I, I will make a quick yeah, response. Yes, quick, and then I'm going to ask them right. after this to take it outside, and they can. You know, no, no, it, it, my, it, I, what I, I do want to make the distinction. There is actually a point factor distinction between public housing. If we consider public housing a landlord, if you consider and the landlord status and landlord requirements and rules are different, and there is a different, there is a, there is a deeply, there is a culture you've heard testified to tonight that makes it more challenging uh, to have problems addressed or even to even know who to address the problems to. And I think that's what I'm talking about is structural difference and the fact that um, to have a lawyer to speak to those problems is not someone who's speaking from personal experience who has understood the, the essence of the complaints. I think that's very important. That's not that and <laughs> I'm sorry if anyone construed that as me demeaning people living in public housing. I, uh, I actually would hope that they need less to me. I, I, it's more demeaning about a process that we are, we own, that we own. And it's also a cultural uh, disparity that we own that needs to be addressed. And in that respect, um, I speak in empathy and sympathy, but not from actual experience. Actually, I did live in public housing briefly for a while, but that does not entitle me to speak for the people who live in these circumstances in this town, in their, their homes, that I can't speak for that. But I can actually try to facilitate any system that would allow them a louder voice. And I'll take the rest outside. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll add to that um, with a just kind of build on that we're doing here to Councillor Murphy that um, in the commercial housing market you can walk away from a place where your landlord is not serving your needs, your basic needs. And if you have enough money to find an apartment to rent on the open market, on the commercial market, you um, you have enough money to find another place to live where the landlord might treat you better. Whereas people in public housing, as we heard um, many people say, as one of the letters that was read to us said, it's people's kind of um, place that they end up because they, because of all different kinds of circumstances, health issues, um, financial issues, domestic violence, um, all kinds of things. And there are people who can't necessarily walk away from a situation that is not serving them well and fairly. So I think we're comparing apples to oranges there. And, and it is a particular, um, there are particular demands to listening to people in public housing that, that, that is, it's quite different from when you are a landlord to people who can pay um, commercial price, not commercial, you know what I mean, um, market, market prices. Um, but I wanted to say, I kind of got off track because I wanted to respond a little bit to that. I first want to say to everyone who spoke that I really appreciate it because one of the things we did hear consistently is that there's some fear in speaking out about what's going on in public housing. There's fear of repercussion, there's fear of not getting um, some of the things that you need um, in response to your speaking out and so it's very much appreciated that you are coming forward. It takes a lot of courage, and, and I appreciate it. Um, I also want to say thank you to Councillor O'Donnell, and I said this at the last hearing and in about the, the six or something meetings that we've already had talking about this. I think it's a, it's a noble um, proposal. I think the values and the ethics behind it are really solid and important, and um, I supported the previous proposal, and frankly, I'm quite disappointed that we're not looking at um, 
adding a larger number of tenants because I feel like, as I said in the last hearing or the last uh, public forum, that concept of nothing about us without us is really key and central to my personal values. Um, I think that people should have as much voice as possible in the management of their lives, <coughs> their day-to-day -day lives, where they live, how, um, how their living situation is administered. I absolutely believe that. But I've also served long enough on the city council to understand when you have to be a realist about what, in fact, will move something forward. So I understand that you had to shift this proposal. I think um, a piece that's pretty disappointing for me, um, more than the, the reduction in number, is not seeing this as an elected um, piece. Because I think, you know, we all have the privilege and the right to vote for the people who represent us politically. And I think that people who live in public housing should have the right to choose who represents them and helps to administer their living situations. So that piece to me is, um, is quite frustrating that we're looking at, again, an appointment model. Um, the other things that I wanted to respond to um, that I heard, um, I don't think that it's a mutually exclusive concept to support Kara Clifford and the Housing Authority Board and to also support the tenants. I think that in this society, we don't know how to support our leaders very well. Um, and I, I don't think that means that we don't hold people accountable, our leaders accountable. I think that we do. I think we push back. We demand our rights. We demand our needs. But we also have to figure out ways to do it that support our leaders, because it's really hard to lead. Um, so I just want to kind of point out that I don't think that this has to be a battle, and it has to be uh, demonization of the folks who are in the Housing Authority and the Executive Director, but I do think that they very much need to be held accountable, and one of the ways to do that is to have strong tenant representation interacting and interweaving with that board and working as part of that board. Um, I'm nervous here because I want to make sure I cover all these points. Um, I, I kind of take exception to this thing that we heard, a call for talented people, a call for people with particular skill sets is preferable somehow to um, having more tenant representation. Again, I don't think that those are mutually, have to be mutually exclusive concepts. One, people who are tenants may have those skills. They probably, there are probably many people that have those skills. And it feels rather denigrating to me to assume that you have to have you know, lawyers or people with business skills or things of that nature that have to come from outside of the tenant body to bring those skills to um, the Housing Authority Board. So uh, I just, I, I really think it's important that we not always speak about how we have to find talent and expertise in other places besides um, from the people who are most affected by the policies that are being um, made, decided upon, carried out by the Housing Authority Board and the Executive Director. Um, and again, it's just, <coughs> Yes, you need knowledge and you need talents, but you need the experiences. And I'm kind of echoing what Councillor Dwight said, but you need the experiences of people. You need to hear their stories. You need to know what's going on in their homes, in their buildings, in their communities, and able, in order to be able to respond um, and to correct issues and address issues. Um, <clears throat> I think I'll stop there. Uh, there. There were so many important points that were brought up, but um, I just want to reiterate how incredibly important it is to me to ensure that we have as much representation as possible. I think we have to be politically prudent in how we achieve that. Um, and. Uh, Actually, there's one other piece. I just I wanted to actually ask a question um, about the voucher holders. 
I did I understand from the letter that you wrote and, and you might have alluded to it as well that um, the idea of elections wouldn't work because those people wouldn't be able to be elected they wouldn't be able to campaign um, they wouldn't be able to be campaigned but is that saying that you would like that representation but you think it would have to be done by appointment and so there, that was making a case for an appointment <coughs> that holds a voucher? So you need to include the surrounding towns. You can't, whoever is on this board can't just be, it's not only someone who's domiciled in Northampton. No, I, I understand that point, but the question I had for you is if elections wouldn't be a possibility for those people that you would hope that somehow somebody would be appointed from wherever, but that they're that are voucher holders. So, I mean, other people can speak to this. There are confidentiality and privacy issues. So, if someone were to call Karen and say, "Hi, I'm campaigning. Can I have a list of every HCVP person that the Northampton Housing Authority represents?" If that happened to me, you put my life at risk. Okay. So you were talking about being campaigned, not needing to conduct a campaign. As and if I want a campaign. Voucher. I don't want the home address of any female or any gentleman who may not want that information disclosed publicly for a number of reasons. So the constituency you're talking about is vulnerable in a lot of different ways that we, we have no idea. It's not like a public election. A lot of people are confidentiality and anonymity regarding the place of residence. This is, you're talking about property. That place may be a safe house. They could be in a witness protect. You have no idea. And you're, so you're treading in some really, you really have to think this through. Okay, so I, I understand the point now yeah. better. And um, what I guess I just want to say again, talking about uh, there, this not being a mutually exclusive situation, I think that um, electing folks is possible, but that some of the appointments can be people that would be voucher holders that have confidentiality security issues. So I don't think that having elected members necessarily negates the possibility of somebody holding a voucher um, being appointed. But the, then, then there's fairness. So if the mayor is appointing people that are whose information and addresses is disclosed to him on this hand, but other people are getting elected that reside in buildings and that this is where it, that's why I wrote that this is really tricky here because you're you're right in the weeds right now <laughs> do you understand so if if someone here wants to run for a position if I want wanted to be a commissioner I need to find out who I want to campaign to rather than just go to Hampshire Heights or some of the buildings where I might put up signs I now need 1200 private addresses and names of voucher holders Many people don't want people knowing that they're voucher holders, and they could be in safe houses that are private. So Ms. Clifford can't disclose that. Those confidentiality <coughs> laws, she cannot. No, I, I do. I understand. So it's a saying. real murky situation, you know? I, mean, I understand. And then the talent, you know, the mayor might want to say, well, I want to appoint someone or even the governor, and then approach her and say, where's the talent? And she may say, well, you know, I'll look at the resumes of all the, you know, it's complicated. Yes. You know, okay. unless people are loud and I think, vocal. I think we get it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talking in circles. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's all. And if I may, just to be clear, we're not disclosing any information that we're not allowed to disclose. It's not part of this at all. I can tell you in Washington, D.C., the 11-person board, three tenants from the units owned and operated by the Housing Authority are elected and then a, a voucher recipient is appointed. So you can have a hybrid model, but I mean, that's out the window. That's what I was trying to speak yeah. up. Yes. No, I think that's right. And, I, and if I may, just as background, I mean, there's a whole question of what participation is. And um, there's actually a really interesting, like classic essay about this, written by someone who used to work for HUD, whose name is Sherry Arnstein. And it was called the ladder of citizen participation. And her point was that it's not like you have participation or you don't. It's not binary. It's a range. You know, at the bottom, it's just ignoring people and placating them. And you have, like, tokenism. And then you have actually empowering people. And so what I would envision for the housing authority in Northampton would be layers. Because I want to have more tenants in the actual governing board. 
then I'd like the Housing Authority to establish a resident advisory board. Um, I'm pretty sure, under, a lot, under at least in terms of creating the, the annual and five-year plans that they're required to make, I'm pretty sure they have to have one. But that could be jurisdiction-wide. Sometimes those are elected, like in Boston. And then you can have building-based tenant associations. So anyway, I sort of picture this as kind of an ecosystem where you have, you know, a pretty a pretty rich system of um, participation in, in different ways that does include everyone ultimately. Councilor Nash. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, Councilor O'Donnell, thank you for bringing this forward. Um, I think the most important thing about both versions has been the discussion that we're having right now. I, you know, whether or not we, we chose to go with this or with the previous plan or some other permutation, the fact that we're having this discussion is really, really important. Um, I want to thank everybody who's been here tonight and spoken, um, and also spoken at other at, at our previous hearing. And also, I, I've heard you at tenants associate or at uh, the uh, board meetings. I've heard you at tenants association <coughs> meetings, and um, and that I you know I I, I want to uh, echo something that Jane had referenced earlier that um, that we we need to get all all get on the same page. That um, that there there's a lot of work to be done here. That there's there's a there's a lot of distrust. There's a lot of lack of funding. Um, there's people who need voices. We need representation. We need to um, build tenants associations. A an advisory board would be terrific. There's a lot of work to do, and I think that um, that uh, that it would be a a good first step to for all of us just to trust each other and, and try to step forward and realize there's a lot of work to do um, this tonight which I'm going to support is part of that this is this is just one small step of the bigger problem that needs to be addressed um, and um, so I was on a roll there but uh, but basically I'm going to support this, and I'm I'm with everybody here on moving forward. I think everybody has everybody's best interest at heart here, and that I, I realize that <coughs> emotions get going, and we can't even agree sometimes. But we're all in the we're all pulling for each other here. So I'm going to pull for everybody tonight and support this, and um, and I'm look forward to doing it in other ways. Thank you. Um, I just want to uh, also echo the thanks um, for everyone for coming and for the courage to come and speak to us and uh, people who came to the previous forum and, and as Councillor Klein noted, we'd have this now is I can't remember fourth meeting maybe we've had. Twenty century one. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we've had multiple meetings on it and um, I too was in favor of the first version and actually in. I sort of stubbornly in each of these meetings have have asked if there's a way that we could have even more representation and whether there's a way that each of the properties that um, are governed by the Housing Authority could have somebody because they're all different. They all have different needs. Um, so it it is disappointing to me that we are moving away from that, though I understand why. And actually, I don't... Um, I'm not sure that the, the will wasn't with the council. I, I was hopeful that the council was going to support it. Um, but I agree with what Mr. Cancel said that, um, and Councillor Dwight that I didn't have high hopes for, uh, for it when it went to Boston. So I, I also want to move, the, I'll use a different metaphor, move the ball forward. Right? That's a sports one. I think that sounds right. Yeah? Is that good? Um, and so uh, I will also um, I will support this. Um, and I'm thankful for the strong voice uh, I heard tonight um, in support of the, the people in the voucher program. And, and that brought a different component to it. And I'm, and I'm also mindful of the complications that were expressed about that. Um, so again, I would like these to be elected and uh, I would like there to be more but I am um, I'm thankful that we are as I said moving the ball forward. Yes, 
way, and I'm hopeful that we this will actually gain some traction, and, and maybe we will be the first, and hopefully not the last, and that um, that we will increase the representation. So thank you, Councilman O'Donnell. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? <clears throat> so what we're going to so my committee, community resources, we are going to vote um, on a recommendation for the council, and then. Legislative Matters is going to vote on their recommendation. So just to remind you all who, Councilor Nash, myself, um, Councilor Goodwell <coughs> is not here right now, but Councilor Klein is doing double duty on both committees because she sits on them. So the three of us for community resources are going to vote on our recommendation for this, and then Legislative Matters will vote on theirs. So for my committee, uh, is there a motion? I would like to make a motion that we send order 18.1.142 forward with a positive recommendation. I'll second that. And so just to clarify, this is the amended version. <coughs> yes, the amended <laughs> Any further discussion? It's been made and seconded? No? Um, would you like a roll call? I think why don't we do a poll just for okay, clarity's please. sake since Councilor Klein gets two votes. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> somehow, <laughs> Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. And Councilor Shera. Yes. Okay. So now we're back at legislative matters and apparently there's a positive recommendation coming from community resources. <laughs> How about that? Uh, is there a motion? I've moved um, the order 18.142 to the full council with a positive recommendation. As amended. As amended, thank you. And was that a second, no, Councilor? Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Councilor O'Donnell. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this order is equivalent of amending and recommending at the same time? Yes. Okay, so it's going to arrive at the council and modify? As, the, as yeah, the final okay. iteration that you okay. presented to the council. Um, can I just add just a couple typos so we don't have to do them? You want to do, do, you want to do, uh, yes. All right, is Scribner's error? Uh, I, I just want to make, uh, you're going to laugh at me. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> the chief legal expert is laughing already. No, it's nothing. I just wanted to I say order that comma, and then I just like a semicolon and I have to do a word petition at, at the beginning. Okay, order that comma. Yeah. And then following, the mayor is hereby authorized, right? <laughs> or, I think it's ordered comma that, yeah. Order, ordered comma that, yeah. right? Oh, that's Sorry. Right. That's correct. Okay. I almost yes. created a Scribner's error for yeah. the press and council. And what was the other one? Just a semicolon at the end of the... <laughs> end of the, the end of the word petition. So right. Got right. it. Right. Okay. okay. So, so there is punctuation there. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right, so as amended, amended. There's Scribner's error, so that's actually not the body of it. Uh, is there any further discussion? Laura, can I have a roll call, please? Sure. Um, I get it. Councilor Klein. Wait, that yes. What? Councilor Murphy. Yes. All right, I'm going to get down the record. It's only going to be able to it all. Yes. Councilor Klein. Better. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's better. But don't. All right, so that uh, passes unanimously with a positive recommendation will be forwarded to the council. To I just represent the town. Move to adjourn legislative matters. All those in favor of adjourning legislative matters, and for those of you who want to stick around, there still is more of, of council sharing right. committee to do. So, all right, all right. Thank you all. No, not for my last. Write a letter. Yeah. It's all we say. Write, right. write a letter. Right. You send that to Give it to Maria. Right. Likewise. I'll be on the second if you're going to go. I Councillor Clyde, we're going to take a quick recess. Uh, 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 u
in the office? Not at all. Oh, I can do that. 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 Oh, I also, I was I was just I'll try to make it. I also want to see, you know, I, I said this, I want to see the tenants of the I want to see it back. It's South and all the young people. All the way in the Oh yeah, you know, that's what I do. I was working on my phone. All right, I gotta may I ask you gentlemen to leave? Right. Well, What's up? Oh, yo, can I stay and observe? You absolutely may. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. This is, only this is a camera leave. Running? Sorry, yes. Only leave if you want to. But if you want to observe, feel free. Yeah. The way you get out in public meetings. Now you think I can speak up? <laughs> Bye, people. Bye. Bye, Roy. Um, you have a good one. Okay, so we are back from recess. We have not adjourned yet. Um, so two items remain. Uh, the first is the approval of the minutes from October 24th, 2018. Is there a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any amendment? Sorry, any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then our last item is discussion of the drafting letter meeting request to the president of Columbia Gas that Councillor Nash wrote um, and that we continued from the last meeting because we ran out of time. Um, it, I am happy to, to discuss this now and uh, I think we can get it done. Cool. Okay. Councillor Nash, do you want to say anything about it? Well, yeah, I'd like to say, first of all, um, I, I kind of jumped the gun on, you know, because I don't think we actually said, let's get Steve Bryant in here or get Columbia Gas in. I don't think we actually, um, I, I, I had mentioned this during council when we were talking about, what the heck, gas leaks or something? Uh, the, the resolution. The resolution. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, I, I took the initiative to draft this letter thinking that based on that dis discussion that we might want to invite Columbia Gas in to, um, to answer a number of questions. So, um, so I was assuming that my colleagues might be on board with this idea and um, so here's the letter. If it, if, you know, if, if this summarizes people's feelings, if, uh, if it, um, one of the things I did want to uh, include here, and I, I'm, I'm more than happy to add, is I think it's helpful to have whoever we're asking to come in and speak to us about, um, you know, especially around uh, safety um, matters, that um, that we state ahead of time what the questions are, so that they know what they need to come in and answer for. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, well, I, I think it's a good, I think it's actually a very well written letter. Um, and I am, would be happy to have you send it. Um, I have no idea whether it will be 
uh, eat it or not, but I just have two things. Um, the is? The is. So, uh, end of the third line, or it is on mine, um, after you explain what falls under the committee. Um, so the committee would be singular, so is. After the parentheses. Which paragraph are you in? The first paragraph, um, including economic development, local business tourism, land use, housing, affordability, etc., and friends, is requested. And then the only, um, the other thing is under the list of um, things that we are asking Mr. Bryant to come with, I would like to see also um, that he bring data about uh, continual leaks and um, the plan to address them. So the leaks that have not been addressed and what is the plan to patch them. Where are you getting these? I continue to need some plan to address okay. them. Just add yeah. that to one of the bullets there. So data concerning data concerning um, continued leaks. Does continued seem like the right way to say that? Uh, um, ongoing. Ongoing. Ongoing, ongoing, leaks. ongoing leaks. There we go. And Columbia Gas is planned to address them. <coughs> okay, I like that. I've been bumped out, so. You've been, what does that mean? You just, oh, oh I, I, it'll take me two minutes to go back in. Yeah, and so, um, so we need to draft it right here, right? I think we did. Laura's writing it down. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, so, and I just need to do it. It's a Word document, so I can edit it and put it in the address, because I just have it as a PDF. If I'm okay. sorry, it's going to print it out. <laughs> Don't, we kind of, it was a Word document, didn't we? What's that? Oh, I think that's the problem. <coughs> it looks like a PDF. It looks that's like I think you said a PDF because I know the address. For, okay, um, hold it. Maybe I. And I would have put it if I could have changed. So I'm going to have it over in my Google Drive, which is over kind of here. <laughs> is anybody else tired? So were you guys all going to sign it? Like, <coughs> bring it to the um, council meeting Thursday night? Oh, is it for the, so is this, this is from our, our committee? Our or committee. From the council? Okay. So, I think. But if we're asking him to come to the city council meeting, do we have to kind of run this by the whole council? So my thought was to invite him to the community resources. Yeah, I think we're inviting him to community resources. Okay. So I have a few things, and to be very honest, um, I mean, you know from other things that we've done on this committee, I don't know, Councilor Nash, if you were here last, yeah, I think it was last term when um, we dissected poor Councilor Bidwell's op-eds by uh -huh. line. And I, I, I can get pretty deep into the weeds, so it's probably good that I didn't have a lot of time to look at this. Um, but I, there are a couple of things I would suggest. First of all, at the, the heading, um, I think you need his title, and I think he's like the COO or CFO and direct, whatever, but you can find it. Okay. Um, and um, I don't think we need to tell him exactly matters affecting our community. I, I think just to make this as succinct and direct as possible is important. So I personally would want to see that whole parentheses taken out. I don't think we have to let him know exactly what the issues are that we address. But you know, that, that's neither here nor there. It's totally up to you if you want to leave it. Um, and then the other thing that's kind of broader is the last the second to last paragraph where you have the bullet points, I'd like to see them up at the beginning. So, because to me, what's important in a letter like this is you want to get across like the most salient points, boom. This is, we want you to come, um, and this is what we want to discuss. It's, I think Councilor Shara kind of um, alluded to that as well. So I, I would consider moving that paragraph up to be the second paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, and the, just a wordsmithing thing, um, 
I think we are in the first paragraph are requesting that you or another representative, I would say, or your designee, because we want we would very much like it to be his engagement in a sense, not just some schmo. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds so terrible and dismissive, but um, yeah, so that just to me makes it have a little bit more gravitas that we're asking him as the COO or his designee to come speak to us. Or his des or his designee. Um, so to speak to a range of matters concerning our gas utility, and then it would go into that bulleted such as or something like that, and then you can bullet those points. <coughs> so you're putting, you know, up front and forward, we want to hear your designee, and this is what we want you to talk to us about. So I like your ideas, but so we're editing this together. So. Yes. Do you do you, do we make motions to? We don't need to. This we is, don't need to. No. So if I think I it's a good idea, we just do it. I think so. I think that's my. I mean, this isn't. Okay, I'm yeah. real. All right, I'm gonna move that it's not up. Ordinance. It's not resolution. Right. It's yeah. Okay, I'm learning. And then I guess the other two paragraphs that I haven't talked about, that, so essentially what's now the second and the third paragraphs. Yeah. I guess I would want to see those kind of tightened up. I don't think he needs like a whole lot of information about what we've done or we haven't done. Um, although you might want to, we might want to um, refer him to the resolutions that we've passed, to if he's interested to kind of get more background on our community, I think those would be good places for him to look before he comes here so he knows what kind of community he's dealing with and what our issues clearly are and what our commitments are. Um, well, we've already sent him the resolutions, right? Yeah, yeah, so. that's true. But I think just to have them in here say, you know, we... Um, it could be enclosures, but... Yeah, or just live links even, or whatever, if we send this digitally, or are we gonna send it as a hard copy letter? <laughs> Do we have an email address for <laughs> Anyway, so I guess I'm just looking for a little more succinctness um, in those two paragraphs. I mean, I, I could, if you would want me to, I could wordsmith it, but then it would delay the. I mean, it's it's totally fine. I think it's a good letter. I just look for succinctness personally in something like this. And I, I like your, your final sentence. I think it's very, very smart. Our shared. Energy. So basically, it, it's paragraph four that your your feelings just too wordy. And Not should be and wordy, should also be referencing the <coughs> the um, the resolutions. Yes. <laughs> I don't think it's too wordy at all. Paragraph four. I I just think it should be moved up because it's it's the specifics of what we're asking him for. And so since we're being specific in the first paragraph, saying we want you to come meet with us, you are your designee. And this is what we want to discuss with you, and that's those bullet points, essentially. Right, so that's now paragraph two, the bullets. Oh, so now you're saying the new paragraph. Right, right. Oh, okay, <laughs> I thought you were, okay. Um, let's see if I can get more specific. I mean, I see your logic in why you put the bullet points because you, you did this explication mm -hmm. in the, what used to be two and three. Mm -hmm. And then based on that information, you're asking for that data. So, so why don't I put the paragraph back? I mean, I always like to sing too, but you know, it's, it's just, it's yeah. a page. So it's, it that was my goal, one page. page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> And I do like that you kind of walk through why we're at, you know. Mm -hmm. 
um, why we're requesting this specific data and so I'm going to put what's now paragraph two back to being <laughs> paragraph four. Okay. And that, but I will make a point of uh, referencing the resolutions. And still, we need to do. We need to. We need to vote on something before it gets sent out. Right? Okay. Well, yeah, but we're we're, we're okay. Stuff. All right. All so right. do you have my? You added my bullet point. All right. About continual leaks. Well, no, not that I'm in. I can add it. All right. I, I suggest you add it. If you want me to vote on it. Laura, are you tracking this too, or are we? Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah we'll Laura, what's it? Data concerning ongoing leaks in Columbia Gas's plan to address them. And what? Columbia Gas's plan to address them. So I would say that if we're keeping paragraph four where it is, we want to make a logical connection between paragraphs two, three, and that paragraph four. So I would just say something like, you know, based on this um, information, we are requesting that you meet with us to discuss but based on this history, history or based on the foregoing? Yeah. 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 Based on what? The foregoing? Yeah, or based on the history of those, I think it's fine. And this is to open paragraph four. Yeah. Just so that it's clear that you're leading into that paragraph four. This you're giving the history that brings it to that point. Um can we go back to the first paragraph in the parentheses? Yeah, let's take those out. Well, I was going to say, if we were to keep it, I would. I don't think we need to list all of it, but the ones that are more that he may care more about and make it make him understand why it's relevant that our committee is addressing this is um, if we wanted to include economic development, sustainability, and land use, including economic development, sustainability, and land use. So it's it's clear that we are the ones in charge of that. Let's see, uh, local business, tourism. So take out tourism, yeah. the, leave the environment. Sort of... No, we've got almost all of them. I take out the arts. Take out the planning. arts. I mean, you know, you can... Arts, planning, zoning, leave sustainability and land, land use. What about saying concerning, among other matters, and then the ones that you're choosing? instead of concerning matters affecting our community and then parentheses. It just, I don't know, I think it makes it, again, shorter and more to the point. should stay in there. And affordability? No. Yeah. I mean they you know, they they all could Well we want to just keep we want to keep arts. tourism and the arts. Yeah, so we'll keep the ones we think are pertinent. So economic development, local business, the environment, sustainability, land use. <coughs> Is that problem yes, no? It's definitely relevant to and All right, and, and housing and affordability? Sure. Okay. Okay, such as. Such as. <coughs> Council concerning matters affecting our community, such as economic development, local business, the environment, sustainability, land use, housing, and affordability. Did we change concerning matters affecting our community or no? Councilor Farney, you still have this. 
Yeah, I just <laughs> I think um, Jim was kind of busy with oh. the other thing when I said it. So okay, what did you okay, say? Well, again? Just... Uh, so uh, just to shorten again, a body that re reports to Northampton to the Northampton City Council um, concerning, among other matters, and then that list. Instead okay. of doing it as a quotation, and not quotation, a parentheses thing, is requesting that you or your designee attend our blah, blah, blah. So you want to edit the Um, so the so after a body that reports to the we should do this in Google Docs. Wouldn't it be great? We could just all be just next time. Oh no. <laughs> um, okay. Do you have other uh, last sentence? There's two spaces between to and engage. Yes. And do you want your name, G? I was just, um, no. I'd like my full name, please. And um, if the title holds any weight whatsoever, uh, we could put Vice President of the City Council if we think that will encourage his participation. <laughs> I'm not saying. Before, after, or before. I, don't, I think you can, you know, you can take that word for Just it. to revisit that question, yeah. um, do we not want him to talk to the whole city council? We just want him to come to our committee? Because I remember when we were discussing the resolution with the full council, the council expressed a certain amount of will to have him speak to all of us. I thought or it was decided we would it would be moved to committee and I mean certainly if he if we know he's coming right people will come we right. will right all of our committee meetings are open right uh, they're also all cross posted to city council but we would certainly yeah I know. guess I was just thinking too when you were saying you know should we list vice president of the council if we're trying to you know, make him feel like he's being invited to something with a certain amount of gravitas he might be more inclined to come to the city council than to a committee to speak, perhaps. Hmm. Um, I'm really just kind of yeah. throwing it out there. I'm not, I'm not attached to either of these things. I remember Ryan O'Donnell saying he leave it to the committee to decide whether or not they were, wanted to invite him. And I was assuming he meant to their committees, you know, as opposed to the full count. I thought that was what he was mm -hmm. suggesting. That's fine. Let's leave it that way. I don't think you have to say that if you if you say you or your designee, I think it's clear that it's a Columbia gas person. So just take out Columbia gas? I think so. Probably his cousin or something. <laughs> he doesn't need your kids preschool teacher. <laughs> and our December we'll pick a date. Speak to Do we want to give him options of dates or just asking for one particular date because if he can't do that maybe he'll say no sorry can't come to our we could say like to our December blah blah meeting or our January blah blah meeting or something like that yeah should we do January or February and um, yeah, it's better December people are so crazed with yeah. the holidays that we have a better chance, I would bet, in January, February. People are cold. Don't want to know about what's up with the gas. Um, and should we include Laura's contact information or my contact information for them to coordinate? Like 
Well, witness, so do we have council letterhead to put this on? Or? Okay. So, and the and it'll have contact information on it, right? Um, no, I mean, because you're Tina Louise, Vice President, Ryan o O'Donnell, but it doesn't really have your email addresses, right? Well, I, I'm trying to think. So no, I don't think office. it does even have the office. I think it's just the names of the councilors, the city seal. Well, if we can get his put it on, email yes. address, Whoever, I mean, whoever we want him to respond to should be the person to send it out. So, mm -hmm. ideally, I guess if we're saying that Jean Louise would be the person to manage it, then we should probably send out the invitation. So. You were your designee. <laughs> <laughs> well, my daughter's high school teacher. <laughs> or your daughter for that matter. <laughs> sure. Okay, so what else do we want to, should I just read the whole thing? Okay. Sure. I'll read it fast. <laughs> uh, the Community Resources Committee, a body that reports to the Northampton City Council concerning, among other matters, economic development, local business, the environment, sustainability, land use, housing, and affordability, is requesting that you or your designee attend our January uh, meeting uh, of community resources, right? <coughs> Meaning. Oh, we don't have to say. Yeah, our January blank blank meeting to speak to a range of matters concerning our gas utility. In 2015, Columbia Gas imposed a moratorium on all additional gas service based on projections that Columbia Gas could not adequately deliver fuel to customers during peak days of the year, especially frigid winter Can days. I Yes. Instead of uh, uh, repeating Columbia Gas twice, yeah. what about saying in 2015, your company imposed a moratorium on all additional gas service based on projections that Columbia Gas could not adequately deliver instead of just repeating Columbia yeah, Gas? Yeah, you, you got it. Let's hack away. Let's get this done. Okay. Okay, um, adequately deliver fuel to customers during peak days of the year, especially frigid winter days. At that time, our use of natural gas appeared to be trending upward, and natural gas was often the fuel of choice for new development and heating system upgrades. However, faced with Columbia Gas, I just put CG's moratorium, disallowing all new service, we as a community were forced to seek alter alternative sources of energy. By our reasoning, we expect that our use of natural gas has decreased as access to gas has been capped. We have also worked in partnership with Columbia Gas to address <coughs> gas leaks throughout our community, reducing escape of especially volatile greenhouse gases. Well, undoubted due to, how do you say that undoubtedly. word? Undoubtedly. I wrote it, I can't, undoubtedly fur, further, what was that, Mary Poppins? Indubitably. Indubitably. <laughs> further, restoring a measure of gas capacity. Three years into the moratorium, and despite numerous requests from city leaders, Columbia Gas has yet to provide the Northampton community the necessary data to assess the need for the Columbia Gas Reliability Project to build an additional gas line. You've got a typo there, an additional. It says an addition. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, thank you. An additional gas line, or to assess the success of our conservation efforts. See, assess twice. I do? Well, yeah, there it is. What's, a, what's another well, word? Sorry, to assess the, or to uh, evaluate. Evaluate. So I just thought of something else. Like I can imagine, like if Marty and Nathan were sitting in this room, just the reference to natural gas as a concept is very problematic for the community that is against the use of gas. I mean, it's now they're calling it dirty gas. They're calling it fracked gas. Um, and the concept of natural gas was was a propaganda thing that was created by the gas industry. Um, so I don't know if we want to. Ref kind of reify that concept of natural gas in our language? Well, so here's my thinking. I want them to show up. Yeah. And I want the data. <laughs> right. 
Right. And that, um, yeah, the, we, we've already figured out how we want to call it, so. Okay. We want to seem semi-friendly. <laughs> so, um, based on this history, we are requesting that Columbia Gas meet with us to discuss our gas utility along with providing the following data. Peak demand consumption numbers for Northampton covering the years 2012 to 2017. Information uh, substantiating the claim that new infrastructure is the only method by which we can f fulfill demand. Data concerning leak repairs in Northampton since the start of the moratorium and how much gas has been retained annually. Can we do a comma after moratorium and then how much gas has been retained annually and um, a list of future repairs or anticipated repairs so that we That's know. the next bullet. You don't it's see it. It's not there yet because we just heard it. Oh, you did? No, you, she, here it comes. You ready? Well, that's <laughs> What? You've confused me. You're in, you're, 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 the next bullet that we this just read the bullet. data concerning ongoing leaks and Columbia Gas's plan to address them. Oh, is that what you were talking about before? Yeah, that's okay. I'm so sorry. I was so busy reading, I wasn't tracking. It's a good idea. It was about to come I out of my mouth. <laughs> it didn't come. It didn't like filter into my. I'm really yeah. sorry. Okay, we look forward to the opportunity to engage in a productive discussion about our shared energy future. Uh, sincerely, us. Um, I would just put a colon after, uh, along with providing the following data. Data, data. Yeah, yeah. And then, I think it's good. Okay. All right, uh, will we feel better if we make a motion? <laughs> I make a motion that we accept my letter. <laughs> Um, and that you, yeah, and that, um, and that you, uh, empower me to send it to Mr. Brian. Mr. Brian. I have no idea. I second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Aye. All those in favor? <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I think we're all listening to Laura Tech. Uh, okay, great. We have another meeting on Thursday night? Yes. So. <clears throat> okay, so that was the, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Thanks for sticking around. Is there a... Thank you so much for doing this. Yes, thing. thank you. Is you're that welcome. We need another motion, people. Move to oh, adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.